Welcome to D.A. Ex Machina. Together, we'll explore the writings of D.A. Roberts along with other authors, with a particular emphasis on the horror genre. We'll discuss writing, the inspiration behind horror stories as well as the possibility that monsters might not be safely locked away in the pages of fiction. Thank you for joining us. Good evening, folks, and welcome to the next edition of DAX Machina, episode number 20. Uh, joining me, as usual, is my partner in crime, Steve Monrotis, Steve Wildman Monrotis, uh, coming, uh, coming to us live after a, a grueling shift at the at the hospital. So thank you for being here, and, and thank you for being as sober <laughs> as you are, because I would have rather be much <laughs> drunker than you are. And joining us in the studio tonight is the one and only Jamie Hernandez. Just released her second book. She is climbing the charts and changing, changing the way people look at zombies. So I uh, want you guys to give her a warm welcome and thank you guys for joining us. Jamie, go ahead and tell us a little bit about yourself. Sure. Um, yeah, my name is Jamie Hernandez. I'm in Dallas, Texas. I'm a stay-at-home mom, homeschooler, and a newer author. Uh, I was published in the Zombie Road Fan Fiction Collection last November, and during that time, I had actually finished my first book, Urban Gridlock, but I hadn't started all the next steps yet until after that came out, mm -hmm. and, you know, editing and getting a cover artist and all that stuff, but I released Urban Gridlock uh, February 1st, and then Suburban Jungle came out June 25th, and so far, it's doing really well. That's awesome. That's what we like to hear. We're already off to a heck of a start. We got a, a love from Tony Kanopka and likes from Cheryl Jones and Robert Miller. Thank you all. Thank you guys for joining us. I got to gotta watch my coffee intake. Otherwise, I'll be having to say, hey, Steve, watch the store while I run across the hallway. Um, kind of a tradition on DAX Mock. And anytime we get a like or a love, we always take a drink, uh, which works out great if I'm drinking coffee, but not so much when I switch to the whiskey. But that may be coming before too terribly long because coffee only lasts so long. Um, Cheryl Jones says, congratulations, Jamie, and definitely congratulations are in order. Thank you. So what made you decide you wanted to write zombies? I mean, there's a you lot know, of genres I've, out there. But. Yeah. Well, I've always wanted to write a book uh, for most of my adult life, and I tried writing various stories over the years, but I didn't get very far in any of them because they just weren't right. They just didn't feel right, and... Then I just, I thought about, you know, I love zombies and they say to write what you love and to write what you know. So that's what I decided to do. And once I decided on that, the story just came to me and it felt right. And I knew I had a good story to tell and decided to put it out there and see what happened and had a really good response. Well, that's that's exactly what the, what you want to get. Uh, fans seem to be really enjoying the book. Uh, from what I've read of it, I, I've only got the first one. I haven't finished it yet. From what I've read, I'm enjoying it. Uh, you 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 have good pacing. I like your characters, and it's a, it's a kind of a it's kind of a fun take on it. It's different than I'm used to because I generally what I tend to read is the more. Um, the more military style. And this one's just a, it's, it's kind of a different view than that. And I, I enjoy that because it's kind of a, kind of a, a, a breath of fresh air as zombies go, because I know the, you know, the breath of fresh air and zombies are not breathing in one. They stink, but, but it's, it's, it's a, a different enough take on the zombie genre to make it really enjoyable and not, not so much like everything else that's out there. So that's, that's really cool. Hey, Alan, hey. Alan, uh, Alan's uh, chiming in, telling everybody to take a drink. <laughs> Little Alan. I guess we'll hit the whiskey for him. Absolutely. Now, I, I've got a question for you, Jane. Yeah. Uh, now, you, 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 you know, your bio, you talk about how you're, you're, a, you're a, 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 I don't say housewife because that has a negative connotation, but you're a stay at home mom, writer, you know, homeschooler uh, in Dallas. I noticed that most of the zombie uh, writers that I, I you know, have followed, they tend to kind of set things where they live. I know Shares is set in Cleveland. What, uh, What's the story behind that? Well, actually, I, I was born and raised in Cleveland, Ohio, and the western okay. suburbs. Of I moved to okay. Dallas in 2012 when I married my husband. He's a Texan. And when I started picturing the story, the key thing I was picturing was downtown Cleveland and a place I'd visited many times, especially as a child, but some as an adult, 
you know, there's a historic Tower City building, uh, the, the Terminal Tower, Tower City Shopping Center. There's a casino, a hotel. It's all one big thing. And I just had this picture in my mind of how I wanted the story to start there, right in public square in the middle of downtown Cleveland. And it's a place I know well. So when I wrote my books, the places I'm describing, I don't give street names and everything like that, but if you're from Cleveland, you'll recognize the places that I'm writing about. You know, that's, awesome. that's awesome. <laughs> I like What's that. Iconic city. I like having a, having a, a real world background. Uh, because it, it 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 kind of connects your readers more physically to the story than they would if you just made up a place. Yeah, I think so. I, I've had some people that are from Cleveland or they are in the Cleveland area that have told me, you know, like, hey, I, I know what that is and I know where that is and I knew what you were talking about. And then they'll ask me, like, is this this certain shopping center and things like that, which is really cool. Like they That's recognize awesome. everything. That's awesome. It's always good when locals are, are like, yeah, hey, I know that place. And, yeah. you know, you've really captured it. Uh, a couple a couple, a couple more likes. Adam Shepard and Alan Gamboa. Thank you, gentlemen. Oh, sorry about that. That was kind of a, kind of a, almost a burp, like a growl when I was taking a drink of coffee. It's like, what the heck was that? Likes his coffee. Yeah. <laughs> like my coffee t- strong enough to chew it. I hate coffee myself. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm, I'm a diehard coffee guy. <laughs> well, nurses and cops are always uh, known for drinking coffee. What's so funny about that is nurses and cops are also known for really having no concept of what good coffee actually tastes like. You know, the stuff we drink is normally you drink it fast before it eats the cup. Yeah. And uh, dissolves you know, so, its way through. You, know, you don't, don't, don't trust our, our coffee choices. <laughs> Oh, yeah, just... blasphemy. <laughs> yeah, did no, I make I, a you... death wish pot. No, I did not. I did not drink the death wish coffee. The death wish coffee will give me a heart attack. That stuff is super strong. You're you're not a coffee drinker. If you did, don't try death wish coffee. It is so caffeinated. I'm when I made a pot, I felt like my pupils were dilating out of sequence. It was oh, wow. super caffeinated. It gave me the jitters. Not not great if you've got high blood pressure. Yeah, and a no, hard it block. Sound like it. <laughs> so, uh, you just released your new book. Uh, can you tell us what? Uh, tell us about that. Sure. Uh, well, the first book basically was centered around the family trying to reunite with each other, mm-hmm. and at the end of the book, some of them did, some of them didn't. The second book is pretty much focused on them trying to cope after a a devastating loss and Max gets home to his family, but they're not there. And one of them is missing. So throughout the entire second book, they're pretty much searching for the missing family member and trying to get everybody finally reunited, the entire group. And the whole thing is really centered on family. And it's centered actually around two families. Yeah. It starts with Max and his family, and then Max's lifelong best friend, Jesse, and his family. Mm-hmm. And the goal is for everybody to get to Max's house. And in the first book, some of them succeed. And the second book, they're trying to get everybody else, you know, finally reunited. And again, we don't want to give too much away about that, but. You know, anybody who's read the first book knows that's what's coming in the second one. But they, you don't know if they're all going to get there or not. Yeah. Are you planning a, a third one or are you going to start a different project? No, actually, I'm planning a third one. I actually have plans for six in the series, if all goes well. Nice. And the third book is going to be really crazy. It's just, it's going to start with a bang, like like the first one did with the, mm-hmm. the zombie apocalypse started Fast and Furious. And the third book is going to start really fast and furious. And I plan to go for six books if all goes well, if people are still enjoying them. Uh, though uh, There may be an opening to go further than that. But I also have another project in the back of my mind I want to work on. Nice. But I can't focus on two different books at once. I want to finish 
what I'm doing before I start looking into doing that. Josh just added himself. Hey. <laughs> That's my friend Josh. He he's the host of another show, and he's working on his own show on StreamYard right now. And he accidentally added himself to this one. Oh, okay. <laughs> the look on his face was priceless. <laughs> the oh crap! <laughs> what what have I done? Oh, I'm sorry. That was just too funny. Oh, that I think was funny. According to plan. Uh. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's why I like live shows. You never know what's going to happen. <laughs> Although well, I got to uh, say, Josh, I would like to get that, get a still of that image of you and put that on a t-shirt. That. <laughs> <laughs> so you said in your book, your uh, your your uh, zombie out outbreak, you know, kind of starts off all fast and furious. It led me to a question here. Uh, so, are your zombies the traditional? Romero shambling type, or do you have the uh, the the actual uh, rage type fast movers? Mine are very much the Romero type. They're slow. They're dumb. They are very strong, though. If one gets a grip on your arm, you can't just pull it off. They're they're incredibly strong, but they are very slow. And I enjoy all kinds of zombies, but there's something about the slow zombies to me that they just seem so creepy you know how you can just have them closing on you you know just mm -hmm. hundreds of them or even 20 of them closing in on you but when you just start seeing, thinking of hordes or mini hordes closing in i just think they're really creepy and that's the kind of zombie i write well they're they're slow but they're relentless and uh, you know exactly. I, I always i remember when i first started watching uh, the walking dead when it came out uh, i was one of the first you know zombie uh, movies, TV shows that I really took seriously, you know, and I was like, okay, what's the big deal? They got guns and these things move at like, you know, the, the speed of the elderly. And then you find somebody, five of them. And then that becomes a problem. You know, it's, 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 it's kind of like when you watch the Kung Fu films, you know, when you're actually fighting somebody hand to hand, his five friends don't stand there and look menacingly at you until it's their turn. You know, <laughs> you're going to get mobbed. And when you've got something that doesn't feel pain, doesn't give up, it has a very single-mindedness to it, it's terrifying. It's absolutely terrifying. It's funny you, you said the speed of the elderly. I'm just envisioning elderly zombies trying to gum your brain. <laughs> no teeth. Or just, just locked onto your head, leaving, leaving drool down the side of your head because it can't bite you. No, they take their teeth out and they chase you like this. <laughs> Robert Miller's elderly speed. <laughs> and the guy in the hat as well. Yeah, whoever that whoever that idiot is. <laughs> Someone earlier asks, uh, what did you think of your Got Your Six coffee? I've had two varieties of the Got Your Six coffee. Both of them, one, one was a medium roast and one was a dark roast. They're both fantastic. If you've ever get a chance to try, de uh, try uh, Got Your Six coffee, definitely try it. Hey, we're getting a full house tonight. Who it is. Hey. Hey, what's up, brother? How's it going? All right, man. How you doing? I'm doing well. Uh, Jamie, this is Carrie Pocket Doc Davis. Um, and Patrick, what, oh, I'm sorry, Patrick, what was your last name? Uh, Akiba. Okay, Patrick Akiba. Naoma Finn from the Dixie Cryptid and What If It's True podcast. She's also a writer and editor. So if you know anybody that's looking for somebody doing editing services uh, services for their books, talk to her. She's awesome. Um, and, uh, you know, we just, we're getting a full house tonight and that is freaking awesome. I'm loving that. Yeah. Great to meet you guys. You too, Jamie. Got your canteen got cup. Canteen cup. <laughs> yeah. Steve, what's up, man? Not much. That's good to see you, doc. You too, brother. Uh, so Jamie, if you hadn't been in on the, on the joke, um, you know, DA mentioned earlier that we tend to drink whiskey on the podcast and he and I have kind of become whiskey snob considering our uh, pathetic budget we have to spend on it. Uh, but uh, uh, Robert Miller, who chimed in on the chat, is also a, a big whiskey fan and was drinking stuff. Well, we, we were trying to figure out what he was drinking out of. Well, being the, the, the good Marine, he was drinking out of a steel canteen cup. And there was just something funny about drinking good scotch or good whiskey out of a canteen cup that we found funny. So we all started doing it. So. He's got to have something to dip his crayons in. <laughs> yeah, we're drinking a little bit of Blanton's tonight. Hey, there you go. 
cute dog. <laughs> <laughs> you had to get in, get in on it too. Yeah, that, oh, that's definitely. Yeah. Randy. <laughs> oh. Well, Doc and and uh, Patrick are coming to us from California. Jamie, you're in Texas. Naomi, you're in Tennessee. Mm-hmm. And me and Steve are in Missouri. So we've kind of kind of got the Midwest and you know and part of the West covered. So I think we're uh, we're representing pretty well. Yeah. Oh, Robert Miller says crayons are a great appetizer for whiskey. <laughs> Indeed. Uh, you're, uh, you're obviously you're right in the zombie genre. And, you know, we've kind of already touched on the fact that, uh, that you know, the zombies are just creepy. Are there any other like horror film uh, icons that, that truly scare you? You know, you turn off by vampires or, you know, whatever. What, anything that's frightening you? That I find frightening? Yeah. Um, you know, not anything in particular, no. Just certain movies, you know, will hit me and I'll find them kind of scary. But most horror movies I don't really find scary. I enjoy them, but I don't find them scary. I don't I don't know what it is, but but kind of I cheesy for the it. most part. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, occasionally there's, you know, the jump scare or something, but as far as actual really being creepy for the most part i just don't find them that scary but i do watch them i love a good scary movie i mean even the ones that don't really scare me crack me up um exactly yes yeah, exactly. yeah, and especially when they get stuff wrong that's yeah. my favorite of course that's my wife's yeah. least favorite because i'm quick to point it out <laughs> you're, so you're the technical advisor too da exactly yes. yeah like, like uh you go. they'll do something and uh, I'll be counting rounds. <laughs> I'm like, hey, he should have been out about six rounds ago. And she's like, shut up. <laughs> you don't and, have chest wounds. You seal it. Yeah. And, and my wife refuses to watch CSI with me because I point out all the crap they do wrong. I'm like, wait a minute. The lab guys don't kick doors in. She's like, shut up. We're just watching it. And now, <laughs> now she'll pause it and look at me and go, I hate you. I'm like, why? She goes, because now I know tasers don't really knock people out. I'm like, no, they don't. Yeah, now you ruined it. Thanks. They just that. hurt <laughs> a lot. They just make Diego. <laughs> that was not me. I just went, oh god, oh god. Oh, it was Roper that kind of squealed. Yeah, and then we had another another guy uh, who sounded a lot like Chewbacca when he got hit. <laughs> it, it was, then we called him that for like months because he went <laughs> real loud. It was awesome. He's like, wasn't that funny? I'm like, yeah, yeah, it really was. Yeah. But did you poop your pants? That's what matters. No, I did not. Yeah. I uh, I felt like I had, but. <laughs> Dude, I'd rather have CS any day than a taser. Because, I mean, a taser any day other than CS, because CS is like six flaming hot cheese pizzas stuck to your face. For yeah. Hour. Or OC. Mm. Yeah. Screw that. Yeah. I'll take the taser ride any day of the week. It's over when it's over. Dripping out of your hair two days later when you're taking a shower, too. So. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, or digging yeah. it out of the corner of your eyes for a week. You don't want that going to your no-no spot for sure. That's no, it. no. So this is the kind of stuff you guys do for fun. You tase each other and and put things on your. No, we're, we're all the idiots that volunteered in uniform to do crap like that. Well, yeah, all, we, all we were voluntold. <laughs> voluntold. Yeah, yeah, you are absolutely so. correct. Now. Yes. That's for sure. He's, you I'm notice that there's a lot of that. testosterone and little intelligence going on here. Yeah, a little of both. <laughs> so, Jamie, you uh, you said you uh, have a third book in, pro- in in progress. What's it called? I actually don't have a title yet, but it'll be along the same kind of theme, you know. Mm-hmm. Well, urban and gridlock and suburban jungle. It's, you know, things are going to take place like around the Great Lakes and stuff like that. So. Nice. It'll be something to do with the lake or, you know, something along those lines. But I don't have the – I can't come up with the title very easily. I'm, that's one of the hardest parts for me. And for both books, I didn't have a firm title until the books were completely finished. Really? I generally have the title before I've got anything else. Yeah. I wish I could. I have so much trouble with them, you know, until one just feels right. And, yeah, that's a hard part for me. I always, always like when I – uh when I can stump carry, 
because Carrie Davis does all my, my battlefield medicine stuff. And I will go, all right, this is what I did to the guy. How do I fix it? And then I spend two hours on the phone with, with, with Carrie while he's like, well, I, I, I don't know about a chest steal from claw attacks, but we'll figure it out. Yeah. That was, <laughs> yeah. That was in one of the Apex, first Apex Predator books. I was like, that's, that's interesting. So let me think about that from Battlefield Medicine standpoint. His his first wow. reaction was, I don't think he's going to survive. Like, well, he needs to. He's a main character. <laughs> he's got to. <laughs> got to keep him We've alive. had that conversation, too. It's like, yeah, yes. I went out of the game for a while, but I don't want him permanently paralyzed. Yeah. Huh. <laughs> okay, you might want to throttle him back just a little bit. <laughs> hey, he's probably not going to survive that wound. I'm like, God dang it. Yeah. Well, his, his spine is now severed. He's going to attack my wheelchair. <laughs> Rest of the stories. Come back on Monday. Maybe I'll be dead then. Yeah. <laughs> Not quite dead yet. I, that's one of, the, one of the fine lines I, I always find that I walk as a writer because I want to do the fight scenes as absolutely realistically as I can. Well, at the same time, I'm incorporating things like werewolves and Bigfoot and Dogman and 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 zombies is that something that you've ran into with your writing jamie do you do you walk a line on that when you're trying to do realism versus fantasy or or altered reality yeah i'm trying to do realism <clears throat> um i don't have zombies are the only thing in the book so there's no werewolves or anything like that but there haven't been any other than people that actually got bit and turned into zombies or died um there haven't been any major injuries yet there will be, but there haven't been, you know, my books are actually, the first book is just the first three days of the apocalypse. The second book is night three through day six. So, you know, I'm packing a lot into each of those days. Some major things are coming up for the characters and there's going to be some injuries. So I'll have to figure out, I'll be talking to some people like you have, you know, like how do I make this work? And, and the Definitely. wife of the main character is a nurse, so that will be handy. You know. Well that I does hope. that does come into play. <clears throat> yeah. That's one of the things I, I've learned uh, is I do write a lot based on my own experiences. Uh, I've got almost two decades in law enforcement in one form or another. Uh, but it's it's reaching outside my comfort zone and talking to people that know more than me. Um, I mean, I, I am, I'm not, a, I'm not a medic. I'm a, a bandaid on it at the at best guy and, you know, put my finger in it or put pressure on it till the bleeding to stop the bleeding until the real pros get there. And that's why I, I talk to guys like Carrie. I mean, I, you know, these guys know their shit. Uh, and when it comes to battlefield medicine, if, if I, if I, if I had to pick any two people in the world to work on me. If I took a, I took a shot to the chest, Carrie would be one of the top two names. Absolutely. Thank you, brother. Okay. Yeah. I talked to my husband about things that even if they're very small parts of the book, mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> such as on their way out of the city, trying to make their way home, Max and yeah. Jesse end up rescuing two firemen. My husband works for the fire department. So in addition to me looking things up on Google constantly, I'd go to him to make sure I have every last little detail right with what they'd be wearing, what mm -hmm. supplies would be on the truck, you know, everything to do with it. And then things with the fire station, which it's kind of like a flashback telling a story from when they were at the fire station before they went mm -hmm. out on that final call with the zombies. You know, there's maybe one paragraph, a few sentences about the fire station. And I go through and grill him on that to make sure I'm getting everything just right. So once I get to the more complicated things that are coming up, um, I have a really good guy that, you know, military and tactical and things like that to talk to. I, I'm going to have to find a good medical person to talk to you for sure. I just, you know, reach out to somebody. I mean, you can find Carrie, you can find Carrie through my, uh, through my Facebook page. Uh, he's my go-to guy when it comes to battlefield trauma. Uh, if it's if it's clinical medicine, I, I, I'm phone call away from Steve. Steve's an RN. Um, I mean, you're just you're knowing the right people. And I've always believed that any story, the suspension of disbelief can carry a story only so far. Um, 
the like the first time I can I can accept you know Godzilla's in the background you know having angry sex with a sky, with a skyscraper, but when the guy says he changed the clip on his Glock and flicked the safety off, I'm like, mm, okay, I'm out. You just you just me. lost me. You know, Godzilla can have the building the only once, but you just lost me when it comes to the technical details. And it's the I, little details that make the stories great. I know as a reader, when you guys add that kind of stuff, whether I know it's, you know, I don't personally know a lot of that stuff, but it feels more realistic when I read it. And, and that uh, makes the book feel 10 times more genuine and helps those moments of disbelief. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, and like what Josh said, this- I'm a I'm a detail oriented guy. And if I'm reading a book or listening to a book or whatever, and it's got that level of detail to it, then that makes it so much more believable, and so you get more immersed into it. Mm-hmm. And I think that I think that gives you a better reader experience if the, if the writer, the author, can convey that uh, when they're doing that, for sure. The public is getting smarter, you know, too. Yeah. I mean, the average lay person knows more. And, yeah. um, you know, uh, you know, like early in the, in the genre, you know, like, let's get pick on horror films for a second. You know, your main character steals a police car. Okay. They, they are able to drive really fast with the siren on. Okay. We got that. And they figured out there's a gun in there, you know, maybe not with a realistic amount of ammunition, or whatever, but you know, they used to not play on the other things that, that squad car would contain. You know, and now people know that you know a police squad car is a mobile police station. You know, there's all kinds of other things: first aid kits, trauma kits, you know, armor, various kinds of things that could be used in a survival situation. And uh, you know, putting those details in makes makes the story more believable, even if you're throwing a lot of disbelief in there with the you know the dead rising and feeding on you with their elderly gums <laughs> joking about. <laughs> you know, yeah, it's. Toothless zombies. Yeah. I don't know why, but I want that book, even if it's a short story. <laughs> the toothless zombie trying to gum its way yeah. through somebody's skull. <laughs> it's funny, you know. You, you mentioned that, Josh, because you know, uh, of course, like Carrie, I'm a registered nurse, and I always think about the medical end of, you know, I, I'm shocked by how many of these uh, risen dead can actually walk and and tactically fight. Based on how they die, I mean, if the injuries are bad. They're going to be so debilitated. They, you know, it doesn't matter if what's animating them. They're not going to be able to fight you. I always thought it would have been fun to watching The Walking Dead to see if somebody would ever come back, like with a CPAP on or something like this. You know, certainly. <laughs> I, I figure, well, people with sleep apnea have a good chance of dying in their sleep and coming back as a zombie. And I'm trying to picture somebody with the, with a mask and the hose. You know, they're just. <laughs> a zombie with a gimp mask on. It sounds like a <laughs> oh zombie walking to unzip it to bite you. <laughs> oh, Lord. <laughs> a zombie with a ball gag. Oh, for God. <laughs> wow. <laughs> oh, yeah. You went there. <laughs> oh, oh, always. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, if it, if somebody's gonna go there, it's probably gonna be me. That zombie's gonna get medieval on your ass. So. Will the zombie remember the safe word? Oh, oh. <laughs> Only if the safe word is <laughs> pineapple. 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 <laughs> what was it on Van Wilder? Clamor flagging, flagging, flagging. <laughs> oh, bring in the clamor flagging, flagging. No, no, no. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. This is uh, that, the de evolution of the show. Rating. There you goes get the a, PG rating. You got a zombie <laughs> again, suit. They got to unzip their freaking face before they can bite you anyway, right? So there's 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 an upside to that. <laughs> Thinking about somebody dying as the back end of one of those horse costumes. <laughs> you know, hear this. <laughs> Yeah. That, that could be new, the that back half of the zombie in the front, not yet. That could be a new series for y'all, BDSM zombies or something. Or furry zombies, I don't know. Whatever. Oh. Interesting. No, I think the furries scare me more than the zombies yeah. do. Zombies from the ER. That could be scary. <laughs> zombies no. from the ER. Yeah, that, that already exists. We, yeah, we have all, you know, Steve and myself and Patrick have all uh, uh, ID'd with that for sure. Oh my God! Yes, uh, we. Uh, I, I've 
with the COVID pandemic uh, at kind of an epicenter here in Missouri, uh, our, our ER is overwhelmed and they're airlifting patients to some of the surrounding hospitals, you know, for beds. And uh, so I work in a, in a mid-level urgent care. And so, you know, crap rolls downhill. So the, the patients that don't have COVID and uh, that would normally be seen in the ER are rolling down to us. And so I noticed the past couple of weeks, we've done a lot more of the, uh, uh, the psychiatrically challenged and narcotically gifted crowd. And uh, Mythic uh, and, yeah. <laughs> enhanced. Yeah, we like to call them pharmaceutically enhanced. <laughs> amateur, <laughs> amateur pharmacists. Yes, yes. Pharmaceutical fun. <laughs> What's that, Doc? Steve, do you still have that going on right now out there? Uh, the, you know, the COVID? Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah, we are we are the epicenter for the country right now, pretty much. Okay. And, uh, yeah, we are, we are seeing a lot of it. Almost all of what we're seeing is that Delta variant. And uh, um, it's, uh, it's scary. It's scary. Uh, I think we're about 32% vaccinated down here. And um, uh, pretty uh, overall, pretty conservative. So they're not real big on the government telling you to wear a mask or stay away from a family or whatever else. So it's kind of a kind of a perfect storm of a bad situation. Well, I mean, I had it back in January, so I'm not personally. I'm not um, going to get vaccinated. I, well, I you're immune. <laughs> yeah, I had it back in April. The whole family had it back in April of last year. So. <laughs> it, it sucks, but I'm still here. I'm, maybe I'm a zombie. I don't know. But Thank God I lost my tape. Could be. Yeah, exactly. There's whiskey <laughs> right there. So. Well, I'm I'm going to join you, fellas. I'm going to put some Bushmills Black in the uh, uh, in the canteen cup. I okay. had to jump in. I don't know if you guys can hear me yet. Hey, Roper. Yep. Hey, hey yeah, we got you. I'm in the new house. Nice. I saw the the fireplace. <laughs> oh, it's. It's freaking beautiful. Anyway, uh, I had to jump in briefly. I'm in the middle of unpacking boxes and getting everything set up because this place is a disaster area as of right now. Um, but anyway, uh, you guys were talking about stuff inside patrol cars. And uh, I remember back whenever DA was first writing the very first Ragnarok Rising book. Actually, Roper was part of the conversation that spawned it. <laughs> yeah, it was me and like two other people down in the Sowards and and, and uh, Forrester. Yep, that's exactly right. And uh, but anyway, I he was like, "Hey, read this. I want to see what you think." And one of the things that he listed in the back end of the patrol car was a box of toys. And mm -hmm. um, I hadn't worked patrol at that point in time, but I was like, I don't know. If, everybody has a box of toys in their patrol car. And then I got out on patrol and I'm like, holy crap, everybody's got a box of toys in their patrol car. <laughs> I had like six stuffed animals in there. I just took stuff from my kids that, uh, that they didn't play with anymore. They'd out that outgrown it and whatever. And, uh, but I kept the patrol car in the event you're out on a call and there's a kid there and you know, somebody's having a really crappy night because we don't meet people on their best day. We meet people on their worst day at their worst moments. And um, so I ended up, uh, I was like, yeah, man, that's spot on. Like there is like toys and stuff like that in the back end of the patrol car, which is fantastic. Um, but that is a thing. It is, it, is in, it is in fact a thing. So you don't just have an arsenal. You were saying that it's uh, basically a mobile uh, uh, police station or sheriff's office. Um, and it is, but at the same time, it's kind of more than that sometimes. Uh, yeah. And then, uh, I don't know why, but Facebook wasn't recognizing it was me when I was commenting on things. It just kept saying Facebook user. I'm more than a Facebook user. Oh. Love, love me. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, uh, you no, probably yeah. haven't been to streamyard.com slash Facebook and authorized your user profile. No, 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 no. This is, this is before I jumped in on this conversation. Also right. correction. I didn't make a sound when I got tased. Jerk. Are you that Shulaka? Was, that was that was no, I'm not. Uh, <laughs> Luke, 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 I, that, I, that was Hammer. That was Hammer, and Andy Hammer. And man, I miss him. Me too. But um, no, there. Josh had mentioned me uh, getting shot with taser, making a groaning sound. That was actually Lieutenant Mayo in the background because he is super freaked out by anything taser related. He hates them. But <laughs> yeah, tasers well, don't. <clears throat> tasers aren't that bad. Like, to be fair, to be fair, when someone's getting tased and you hear a groaning so sound, you assume it's the guy getting tased. True, but Mayo was the kind of guy that, like, you'd spark test a taser around him, and he would just panic, would just shoot out of him in a hurry. 
Like oh, from just, all of his pores, there were just, just panic. panic. Just it. Well, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> that's like maybe in here. Maybe it's a safety so, drone, Josh. Maybe if you see somebody get tased, you're, if you've been through it, you're like, ooh. Yeah, <laughs> yeah maybe. That's, that's actually close to the sound. It was yeah. just this, <laughs> the whole time. <laughs> Did you see? His nose broke his fall. <laughs> <laughs> then, then you got the other end of the spectrum, which I won't name won't name him by name, but he, you know, he was our sergeant for a while, went on to become a lieutenant. I don't know what you're uh, talking about. Yeah, I don't know who you're talking about, who would giggle gleefully like a small child pulling <laughs> wings off a fly. <laughs> yeah. He really would. He really would. He kinda okay, so he kind of reminded me of like um one of those English bulldogs that thought they were like six times bigger than they really were. But then you weaponize him, and he's like, "Oh, now I can do it." I always thought it more of Rod Farva from from Super Troopers. Wow, that's really close too. I never thought of it that way. Although I was telling a story about our uh, our lieutenant from back in the day the other day about the uh, the trebuchet and uh, and all of the great stuff. See, all of these th these people that we're talking about. All of this sounds like stuff that you guys wouldn't necessarily be interested in, but every single one of them are inspirations for characters in his original books. In the Ragnarok books. All of these are people that you've read about before. Yep. Well, Roper, my dad needs to uh, get into a, a, a conversation with your former lieutenant about uh, you know dealing with squirrels. Uh, my my father has had a, an escalating uh, hostility uh, with some squirrels in the neighborhood, and now that he's retired, he's he's gotten rather uh, sadistic and uh, he started carrying around a, a flashlight that uh, has a taser built into it. Oh shit. And uh, one of those, yeah, I think it's like a million volt, you know, little crackles around the ring of the flashlight around the bezel. And uh, so he's discovered that if he opens the back door and crackles it at the screen, the squirrels will run. The sound oh, nice. scares them. Well, one of the squirrels jumped up onto our little three foot chain lake fence rail and was basically sitting on the on the fence rail, flipping his tail at him. You know, basically, in squirrel language, you know, f fat man, come get me, right? And hit, so my, the fence. my my dad calmly comes over to the fence and touches the top of the rail and fires the taser. Uh, yes, the squirrel's love tail it. immediately shot up and pushed, and he launched <laughs> ten feet horizontally into a tree. Hey, you know, whatever gets him out of there. So oh, motivation I, is a wonderful thing. What's that? What is that? Holy crap. It's the NSA trying to shut us down. <laughs> Maybe. I don't, <laughs> I don't hear anything. There's oh, a ghost hawk hey, helicopter hey, sitting outside my office window. Something. Up so before I bail out, because I, I personally have found that uh, too many voices kind of convolutes things just a little bit. Um, Jamie, uh, I appreciate all of the posts that you make on the uh, the Facebook group because I have been having a blast commenting on all of the things. Um, I'm the one that works at the Axe House, so I got to take a picture of the Axe Wall behind me on one of them where you're like, pick a weapon that's someplace near you. And I'm like, I've got <laughs> too many of them. That's right. I remember that one. Yeah. It's just, I'm glad oh. you're having fun with them. Oh, a blast. I'm having a, a great time with them. And I, I had some earlier today. I was sitting around uh, scrolling Facebook and it's always so interactive. And so that was, that's always fantastic to be a part of a group that you feel the need to like comment on at least occasionally. So, but again, I'm going to get out of here, guys. I'm going to finish pack, unpacking some boxes. Bye. Bye. Thanks for popping Bye. in. Later, Matt. It's good to see you, man. You man, too. That's on your place. Thanks. Roper will be doing the uh, voiceovers for the Apex Predator series. He's doing the audios. Nice. Oh, wow. So if you uh, know anybody that's looking for uh, for narrators, Roper and um, another another friend of ours does it. Um, I don't know if I one I should say her name on the air without her permission, but you know, or Naoma also does them as well. So we've got a, a, a ever growing stable of talent that just seems to some somehow wind up in our area uh some amazing people and it's it, it's kind of a wonder to behold how many how many people with so many different talents uh have have come and gone through this show i mean it's a pretty amazing amazing group of people it's it's probably okay to say her name she was on uh state of the nerd last time we oh, were okay. on and she might be coming back for more shows with us so okay She's going to be doing. Yeah, uh, 
I'm Go ahead, Carrie. She had that many friends. <laughs> <laughs> well, the uh, ink's not dry on the restraining order yet. So. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> that escalated quick. Yeah. Well, yeah, I'm gonna be looking into I was gonna say I was gonna be I'm gonna be looking into doing audibles audible soon. I don't really know much about it, but I wanted to get the second book out and then start getting into it. Audible's a kind of a lengthy process. Uh, it's, it doesn't, you don't launch it near as fast as you do a, a, a Kindle or, or a, pre, a print book. Um, and it's, there's so many processes you've got to go through one, finding the narrator, how you get the book set up. And it, it, it's, there's a lot of hoops you've got to jump through. And I really think Amazon could streamline that process and make it easier, but thus far they haven't. So just be prepared for the process to take several months per book. Yeah. Wow. Well, okay. Oh, someone's got fireworks. Sorry, that's why I keep muting myself. Either that or the the zombie apocalypse. Or <laughs> Thought maybe it was my neighbors. <laughs> Time to walk the road. My you neighbor know. teaches uh, classes in um, concealed carry, and uh. she's had a whole group over there all day. And I've lost track of when the shooting stops and the fireworks begin. <laughs> Nice. <laughs> yeah. I, I know when it comes to audible though um see i drive truck uh, you know predominantly for my main job and it's invaluable for me to be able to find a audible copy um i just i almost never have time to read anymore i want to i have tons of books i want to read but but if i can find it on audible that's why i'm like da we need to get your books done <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I totally agree. Because I'll, I'll that, sit down that, to read one. That and process like, is working against me at the moment. I know. Um, but yeah, Audible is super, super great. Yeah, I, I second that because I've been traveling a lot between Colorado and Texas, back and forth doing classes down there. And on the last one, I had a 15-hour drive from Corpus Christi to, to Colorado Springs. And... I listened to a couple of books on the way, and that was a great way to keep me engaged because mm -hmm. my brain was sitting there processing everything, right? You know, thinking of the scenes. And Josh, you know what I'm talking about, man. Yep. When so the scenes, it keeps your brain active, you know, and and there that keeps me awake. So yep. it's pretty it's pretty awesome. Yeah, absolutely. I was thinking about uh, you were talking about the audibles. You know, I've only. Uh, Read, return, read a couple of Bible books. I, I tend to prefer the, you know, the the printed word, and it was always interesting when you get a good narrator and you could hear like the voices of the characters and things like that. Mm -hmm. uh, I, with the fact that you know, at least in DA's case, many of the characters have a basis on a real person. You know, uh, like when I go back and read, you know, the Apex Predator stories, I can't not hear Carrie's voice. You know, <laughs> as as Doc. And it gives it a different perspective with that, you know, that that distinctive voice. And uh, yeah, bless your heart, you know, man. I, bless your heart. That's all yeah. I say. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and it, you know, in particular, I was uh, thinking of the dialogue that Doc had with the characters after the, his first time in the sweat lodge, and just the the whole down earthy kind of a way he was describing, you know, the the hallucinogens and everything. And I was like. That's funny as hell when you hear Carrie talk like that. <laughs> well, I mean, and DA's known me long enough to know that that's that's the way I talk, and so it's great to hear that that you know you you can you can put the two together, and and to me that makes the character even more believable. And when he told me, he said, "Hey, you're gonna have a cameo in this one book, and then the other book you're gonna be a character," and I was like, "That's pretty freaking rad." But <laughs> you know, I'm gonna try to get Angie down here later so she can say hey to everybody. But well, that'd be awesome. Pretty, yeah. So yeah, it's pretty rad. Jamie, do you uh, do you base a lot of your characters off of real people, or are they just complete cre uh, creations? Uh, most of them are complete uh, creations of my own. Mm -hmm. Jesse's wife is inspired by one of my closest friends. Actually, she's my maid of honor. Um, just short, petite, mama bear. That's just like scary, <laughs> you know, like protective, 
Mm -hmm. uh, you wouldn't expect so much out of a small package. And she's kind of, she's not completely based on her, but inspired by her. Uh, most of the characters I just, like I said, created in my own mind, but there are a few aspects or there's personality traits that are based on some people. I did have a cameo in my second book that was completely one of my friends, one of my author friends, actually, someone who that was self-published alongside me in the fan fiction collection. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I wrote him as I see him and he loved it. And that was really cool to have, you know, to write him, have him read it. And then him just, he said he was like a schoolgirl about it. He's <laughs> screenshotting it, sending it to his girlfriend and everything really excited. And that was really fun to write. So I might start doing a little more of that, but my core characters are pretty much just characters I came up with that, you know, my own imagination. I think it'd be well, interesting though. Oh, it, it um, always is. Yeah. It's, it's, it's characters are the, are the best part of the stories. Um, because you can only drive the story so much with just story. Your characters are going to have to do the heavy lifting. And if you don't have interesting characters, you generally don't have an interesting story. And, and that's what I like about, about in any book, any book, good book I've ever read is the dynamics between the characters uh, and watching the characters adapt and grow as the story continues. And that, to me, that's, that's what it's all about. That's what I try to do with my characters. Yeah, I really enjoy writing my characters, but you know what's turned out to be my favorite, or a lot of the time it's my favorite, is the two youngest boys in the book that are both about 12, 13 years old. Writing about them, their dialogue, how they see things, how they communicate with each other, and just their relationship overall has become one of my favorite parts to write. Just seeing how they've changed in this short period of time and those mm -hmm. moments when, you know, they're scared or something's happened and they're the only people they'll open up to is each, each other. Mm -hmm. You know, I've really, really enjoyed writing the boys. That, that's awesome. And, and, you know, when you've got solid characters like that, it really gives a much higher degree of believability to a story because you find yourself relating to the way the characters react and you find yourself becoming emotionally invested in these characters. And, uh, and that, to me, that's, that's what makes a story more palpable. It's what, what drive, what br draws your readers in and engages them on more than just a storytelling level. It, you get them on an emotional level. And when you've made that, that, that emotional connection, you've, you've achieved a good story. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. You know, yeah. it's nice to make people cry too. <laughs> I made a lot of people cry. <laughs> Kurt. I was telling DA, you know, character progression is one of the big things I've, I've noticed about his books. And he's like the, you know, the, uh, uh, the, yeah, uh, George R. R. Martin, you know, uh, you know, I was like, dude, don't get liking his character because you're going to kill him off, you know? And that's one of the things I like is seeing characters progress and seeing the emotions, uh, and how you emote those characters as you go throughout the books. And, I think that makes everything more believable and the reader themselves can get into a much more visceral experience. You know, when you're, when you make them, when you make them get in there, when you make them get into the whole psyche of the character and you watch them progress from book to book to book and you see them grow, that makes it, that makes it a much more enjoyable experience as a reader. So, but you know, what the hell do I know, Steve? I'm just a nurse. So, <laughs> Carrie's, Carrie's, you, Carrie's, you words than I've ever heard him use before. Yeah, not not too bad from a redneck from route through Mississippi. So there you go. <laughs> there you go. And Thomas Whitney says Carrie Davis' voice changed the whole character in the book for me, a different subspecies of critter. Hey, if, uh, Thomas, I'll say it for you. It's a whole different subspecies of critter, man. So there you go. <laughs> South Mississippi for you. Well, you know, you're the uh, that Mississippi understatement is what makes uh, the both you in person, but then pocket doc the character in the book so fun. Uh, you know, like uh, reading uh, uh, the Wendigo uh, when when uh, you know Carrie is calling in the you know Carrie's calling in the proverbial airstrike, and uh, he, he realizes that uh, that things have gone south. And you know anybody that could be making a distress call and still have the comic wit to say that uh, something's having angry sex with your snowmobile uh, is is absolutely amazing. We were talking about that the other night, man. 
<laughs> well, well, and then you know the thing is literally tearing down the doors and you know dismantling this machinery, and all Doc can say is, "You, know, you need to get here, most freaky tick man." <laughs> yeah. Like it, it's pretty serious. You don't need to understatement. Yeah, yeah I mean, understatement. Like, yeah. yeah, like he and yeah. I met when we were in nursing school because we're both nurse. He's a nurse. I'm a nurse. We're both paramedics together. Uh, long time ago, another lifetime ago, but. You know, if you if you stay calm like that, when I, and when I was in the military, things were getting bad. You'd be like, if you got to maintain a sense of humor because things have already gone as pear shaped as they're going to get, you know. And and you got to if you if you maintain a sense of humor, everybody around you is like, okay, well this sucks, but it doesn't suck that bad, you know. I mean, it yeah. still sucks, but it doesn't suck that bad. So we have you know. a a guy yeah. from Oklahoma that's on one of our code teams, and. Uh, He's he has the same, just you know, slow paced, easy going, redneck kind of way of speaking. And uh, I was working to code with him, and uh, I happened to be on meds for that one because I was just close to the code cart. So you know, I'm I'm pushing all the all the medications going through the algorithm. And I remember, yeah, you know, I pushed the second dose of Epi into this guy, and nothing happened. I mean, like th there's no reaction at all. And he just he looks at the monitor and goes, "Hmm, well, that's not good." And and I'm sitting there going, he's dead. And and you know, I I can't even do his voice like you can. I'm like, huh, that's not good. And I'm like, yeah. Thank and I'm like, I'm drawing up, you know, the next medication, you know, while they're pounding on this guy. Uh, we ended up actually getting the guy back, but I, I just remember how surreal it was because all the rest of us, you know, our voices had gone up an octave and we're talking real fast, and he's just. You know, we're going. We're, you know, we're going to see if we can fix this critter. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, here's the thing. I used to say to guys, I mean, keep on going, empty the drug box on them because I mean, what are you going to do? Kill them? I mean, they're. I mean, I mean, they're 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 on death's doorstep. They got, as my granddad used to say, they had one foot in a grave and one on an enter pill. So they're they're right there. So you got to do what you can do. You know, I love that phrase. I might have to steal that phrase. Do it. One foot in the grave and one on the manual field. But other than that, they're all right. Uh, Sal Python says, embrace the suck while somewhere Margolin is doing push-ups. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so again. Jamie, you uh, you said you've got a third, you know, as many as six books in the, in the uh, series? Yeah, I have a plan for six books. What's um, the plan? So I'm sorry, go ahead. Well, um, like I said, the first two books just cover the first six days. Mm -hmm. It's going to start speeding up a little bit. It's going to cover, you know, a few more days than that in the third book. Mm -hmm. And eventually it'll cover, you know, slightly longer periods of time. Mm -hmm. But I have an entire story arc planned out <clears throat> for the series itself and for all the main characters. So... The story I want to tell, I think I can do in six books. And, you know, if, if readers are enjoying them and keep wanting them, then I'll keep going. Um, definitely complete the six, and then I think it'll be open to go further from there. But, of course, it's a zombie apocalypse, so not everybody can survive it. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, but I don't just kill off characters everywhere, you know, mm -hmm. especially because it's based mostly on the two families and the people that, you know, they pick up along the way, a handful of people. I don't kill that many people, but people act like I kill everybody. They get on me, they complain, and they're like, I can't believe you did that. And, you know, I'm mad at you, like joking, obviously, but I'm like, but what? I, I only killed this person and this person, you know? And, and when I kill someone off, there's a reason for it. I don't, it's not like I have a huge cast of characters so I can just randomly kill them off. It's a smaller cast of characters, so if someone dies, there's a good reason behind it. You know? I've gotten no, straight up smiling. hate mail. Yeah. <laughs> I've gotten straight up hate mail over killing characters. Dude, yeah. I come to a con just to have it out with you. <laughs> yeah, and a guy drove to a convention in Kansas City from Tulsa, Oklahoma, just to argue with me. <laughs> oh, wow. That's crazy. He was like, pissed. DA, are you in Kansas City? No, no, I'm in Springfield, Missouri, but I, I did a show in Kansas City, and uh, 
and the guy drove up when he found out I was going to be there. He drove up from Tulsa just to argue with me about one of the deaths in Ragnarok. <laughs> no. he, he was pissed about Gunny, and he was not going to be calmed down either. And that's dedication right there, man. Yeah. I was astounded, a little terrified, but also astounded. <laughs> Yeah. It's volumes about your ability to uh, build a character, though. Right. I was going to say, you, you inspired strong fandom. That's good. Yeah. Well, after I heard the guy out and heard his complaints and explained why it had to happen that way, he was fine with it, and he had only bought the books in Kindle to that point. He bought every book I had on the table and T-shirts and, and then hung out and talked to me for an hour. That's awesome. Wow. Yeah. yeah. But he, he came up there with the sole intent, intention of giving me a large piece of his mind. <laughs> now, Amy, now, I gotta ask you, is it, oh, go ahead, Kerry. Sorry, go ahead, Steve. Uh, you know, we've had you know several writers on the show, and I've got to, the wonderful chance to meet some of these these uh, talented people. And it seems like the majority of writers that we've talked to seem to get a little bit of sadistic joy out of our reaction, our suffering when a character dies. Uh, mm -hmm. Do you uh, do, do you get satisfaction, or do you view it as more of just kind of a, a mechanism to, to reach a certain point in the story? Well, I look at it kind of like kind of in between that I'm getting that big of a reaction that people were that emotionally involved with the characters and with the story. Then that just means I'm doing my job well. I'm telling mm -hmm. the story well and mm -hmm. that the characters are developed so well that they care so much about them. So it's not like a sadistic joy in it. It's a, you know, I'm happy to see people that connected to it. That's and awesome. how many people have told me, you know, that I had them in tears and things like that. I'm like, that, yes. that's the payoff yeah, that's right the, there. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, Dia and I have joked that if he ever kills off Marvel and he and I are no longer friends. <laughs> and, uh, you know, yeah. and so, you know, it's just you know, stuff like that. You know, you, you get attached to these characters. And, and I remember I was talking to an author one time. And uh, I, I you know, he, who also has a, we've been kind of dubbing the George R. R. Martin effect, you know, where we just seem to mass slaughter, you know, big characters. And he goes, well, I always know that such and such is safe. I'm like, well, why is that? He goes, because my wife has already told me she will divorce me if I kill him. <laughs> <laughs> and so that it's fun to read the stories knowing, well, eh, he's going to get out of it. He's okay. <laughs> They're still married. <laughs> yeah, don't get any ideas for Doc, D.A. That's all I got <laughs> Just saying. I'm, I'm more scared of your wife than I am of you, so I can't kill you off. Me and you both, brother. She likes sharp, stabby stuff, so there we go. Well, I, I, I want to show you guys something. and uh, th This is kind of a little little teaser for the next Codename Wild Hunt book. Um, somebody issued a challenge to AR-500, and they built Mandalorian armor. AR-500 uh -huh. built working Mandalorian armor. Uh, yeah. So I contacted them and asked them if I could use that in a book. And they said, hell yeah, you can use it in a book. Let us know when and where it comes out. And we want to, we want to check it out. So at some point, probably in the next Codename Wild Hunt book, Margolin's going to show up with a set of this shit. Nice. That is awesome. <laughs> yeah. That's pretty does, good. It, does it even launch the... Uh, no, it doesn't do any of that. It, it's... It's made with modern technology. It's Kevlar. Well, yeah, but I thought it would have some sort of little. That'd be cool if it had some sort of like a, even just like a little dart or something would be neat, or just an extendable blade. That would be badass too. Yeah, uh, Jamie, are you you write Chronicles of the Undead? Yes. Yes. Okay. Chronicles of the Undead. Most people just refer to it as the first book, Urban Gridlock, and the second book, Suburban Jungle. Most people don't refer to it as Chronicles of the Undead. I'm trying to get that to stick some more, you know, since it's to help them keep track of the series. All right, Absolutely. yeah, I just pulled that up on Amazon. So that's that's a couple of books that are going in my my reading list, like and and oh, Patrick yeah. too for for real. So because I was telling him, I was like, dude, you got to check out DA's books, and he's like, who's this DA guy? And I told him, I said, <laughs> I'm a character in one of the books, bro. Just some but, schmuck, some yeah, crazy. Some some, some, some crazy jackass. Just some crazy <laughs> Likes <laughs> hats. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. Yeah, so yeah. that's definitely something going on my reading list for sure. Yeah, I've got four or thank 500 you. books on uh, post-apocalyptic fiction is what I call it, but uh, I haven't run across you two, but I definitely will now. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you. 
Yeah, that that's the reason I wanted I wanted Patrick to come on tonight because of what DA and I talked about, you know, about some of his uh, one of his experiences. So, uh, but when we get to that point in the show, uh, DA, oh, definitely. I want him to talk about okay. That. Well, I I still got to look into getting these made. That's yeah, really- that's have that's you, gonna happen. Have you talked to uh, Have you talked to John yet? No, I have not. I will try to get that done this week. I've had so many irons in the fire this week. Yeah, it's it. been nuts. I've been the only dude in the shop making kits for the, this week and next week. So, but send me the artwork for the Team Odin as okay. well, and I'm gonna get a I'm gonna get a mini rocker for that pat for that kit we that I showed you the other night for the so, uh, low pro. Yeah, the, I'm gonna call it the Spark Kit. Nice. So. A spark in the dark. So a uh, special purpose active response kit. So nice. I think we're going to call that. So it's, it's, yeah, it's going to be pretty rad. I like that. Thanks, man. Yeah. I was, I was sitting in my hotel room the other night in New Hampshire. You know, going, <laughs> what's the names? You know, I was going through the names, looking Google searches, make sure there's no, no trademark confusion or anything like that. So, yeah. So we're going to call uh, My, uh, uh, for Christmas, uh, my wife got me a range bag to take out you know, to for shooting and uh i had you know other than putting some stuff in i hadn't been out to the range since christmas and i got to go out with my dad this weekend or this past weekend and uh, i noticed that i've got uh the uh molly uh webbing in various places on it and on the end cap of the bag there's a, a piece of of molly webbing and it literally is the exact same size as your uh dark kit and I'm like, I know what's going on this bag. <laughs> and, uh, yep, there you go. And uh, I'm like, this will fit perfectly. Jamie, if you're needing yeah. your characters to have medical kits, uh, how, how Carrie and I got hooked up is he runs Dark Angel Medical. They make some of the best trauma kits in the business. I carried one as a cop for years. I uh, had one on my, on my, uh, my trauma plate, and I also had one uh, on my duty belt. So he, he had Dark Angel Medical, best kits in the business. Thank you, brother. Appreciate that. Awesome. That's a good for our company. Right? Yeah, yeah. And, and and it's funny. He came up with a name for that for that company. So really, nice. yeah. He came up with the weird. Me and him were sitting there. We may have had some bourbon involved. I don't know, but <laughs> we were sitting there talking one night. And he's like, "Dude, I got a great name for your company." And he told me, "I was like, oh my god, that's it." And how I did the sketch, like yeah. right there, and that's where our logo came from. So, and that's actually me on the logo. So it's kind of rad. It's a damn so, good name. Really cool. Thanks, but it's like it's like a, it's like a, you know it's scale to size, so it's like a miniature logo because I'm only five six. So, so it's actual it's, size. It's actual <laughs> size. <Yeah. laughs> it's actual size. It's scale to size, so it's actually real. <laughs> so the not really an angel. It's more like a pixie. <laughs> More like a fairy, but <laughs> fairy. fairy. I, I say, like I say, sprite. So there you go. They just, have you you have, they just have you laid out and trace you for the logo. <laughs> exactly, like a chalk outline. Yeah. Can you do the board like a butterfly? <laughs> <laughs> that was good. That was good. That's hilarious. That could be a t-shirt. Heck yeah. <laughs> I, I want to find someone that can draw a picture of a Wendigo ripping apart a snowmobile so I can do that t-shirt. We, or, or, or a, rip, a Wendigo like, have, have, like, like humping it, like a dog, you know, you know humping it. Yeah. Like my granddog humped his arm last time he was here. Yeah, the, yeah. I don't yeah. want to talk about that. Yeah. <laughs> He's still, <laughs> still, 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 still the weenie dog. Yeah. I don't. I, I don't want to talk about that. <laughs> He's doing therapy for that. That's awesome. I mean, for us. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, the dog's owner sitting there while it was humping my arm, and they weren't doing anything about it. So it's just. Uh, it was. It was kind of like the scene out of uh, National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation. Just he's got a little. Just let life. him finish. <laughs> just let him finish. Just let yeah. him finish. Let him go. <laughs> oh lord! And the dog was so small, I would have felt bad if I would have hit it. So it was just. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I got nothing. I can't. <laughs> <laughs> 
Oh, my awesome. my <laughs> brain is spinning with the visuals on this. I don't know what to oh. do. So much happening right now. Yeah, oh. so many middle images. Oh, so. <laughs> so, yeah, so about that. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> something bit me. I think the bourbon must be working right now. I'm not sure. So. <laughs> me. Uh, so, Jamie, one of the questions we always ask of all of our Zompak authors when they come on is: is what's what's the hook? What what creates your zombies, or is it? Too much of a spoiler to reveal it to us. It's actually something I haven't revealed yet. I okay. know exactly what happens, okay. you know, down to the last detail, but it's not going to be re uh, revealed until a later book. Gotcha. Later in the series. I'm looking forward to it. Great. Thank you. Awesome. Yeah, I know people want to know. Some people get really upset if it's, you know, never explained. It's, well, that's that part of the, the big fun in it. You, you always yeah. like, what causes that? How does that happen? Uh, and I think a lot of motivation, at least in, in my perspective as a, as a reader, is zombies scare the hell out of me. They, they really do. And, and uh, you know, it, it, maybe it's because I, I work in, a, in an emergency department. You know, if it realistically ever happened, if it went down in Springfield, Missouri, there is a good chance I'm going to have contact with patient zero. And yeah. Part of my French, but I'll be goddamned if I'm going to be patient one. Yeah. You know, it's it, and and so I I want to know how these things are happening, and my mind is is wrapping around, you know, that 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 innate fear, you know, it's like, you know, what what causes it? What am I looking for? You know, it's like, you know, people who are very religious, they're always, you know, they have, you know, th these things have to happen as the start of the apocalypse. Okay, I want to know what the key elements that have to happen before the zombie apocalypse happens. <laughs> Well, one thing I think is that with uh, with all, everybody either being an author or a big zombie reader, I think we'd have a big step up on the rest, rest of the population. If something yeah. like that ever actually happened, you know, that normalcy bias that comes into play, people wouldn't be able to accept what they're seeing. And we'd be like, man, no, that's zombies. And we, you know, yeah, when wouldn't I have took that the panic and... When I took the position as the supervisor, the overnight supervisor for security for the hospital where Steve works at, uh, my my direct supervisor told me, he says, as the overnight supervisor, it's going to be your job to go to the morgue to release the bodies to funeral homes in the middle of the night. I said, okay, but fair enough warning. Any of them set up, I'm shooting it in the head. <laughs> right. That's going to happen. Yep. Well, it's like the, the story I was telling you, today where I was working in the uh, in the simulator lab at the at the hospital, mm -hmm. and we we're running a simulation on this this called Simman. Simman is about a hundred thousand dollar, yeah, simulated human that you use to like uh, you know, practice like codes and and various things, and you can program it to have different attributes. Well, we were supposed to be doing a mock code on this Simman, so your Simman was going to go into cardiac arrest. We were going to bring him back, or at least attempt to. Well, whoever was programming the simulation did something wrong, and as we've confirmed that he's gone pulseless, so his heart is not beating, but there's electrical activity, he starts moaning. Nope. <laughs> and and nope. being the, the, the dumbass that I am, uh, I immediately grabbed the hemostats that were in my pocket. I said, not on my watch, Walker, and I stuck him in his ear. <laughs> the instructor was not pleased. They found it not amusing at all. The rest of my co-team was on the floor. But I was like, First of all, that was a bad simulation. If he's moaning and pulseless, this is what I'm doing. Yeah. You know. Yeah. And then she reminded me it was a hundred thousand dollar toy that I just stuck in the ear. So Yeah. They they really frown on when you, you pull your non approved concealed weapon out and put two rounds in her frick in her freaking forehead. So that's yeah. all that's all they frowned upon. I can see you doing that, Gary. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, they they say, oh, this hospital's a gun-free zone. I'm like, yeah, not when I'm here. Just saying. <laughs> Just saying. If no one carry, it would probably be uh, suppressed. So all you hear is the shells hitting the floor afterwards. Yeah. <laughs> you, know, you hear a couple of <laughs> coughs. <laughs> what is that? Don't worry Nothing. about that. <laughs> ding, worry ding, about ding, that. Ding. Yeah, <laughs> no big deal. I'll pick up my, I'll police my brass on the way out. <laughs> yeah, don't touch them now. They're hot. Yeah, exactly. With, uh, we were at the range the other day. My my dad's friend, who's a retired uh, 
law enforcement officer uh, was shoot, was we're shooting at the human silhouettes, and he's double tapping them, and everything you know, chest head, chest head. And my dad kept asking, "Was like, well, why do you keep shooting him in the head?" And uh, this this you know, very slow talking country boy goes, "Well, you can't kill a zombie with a body shot, dumbass." <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, "Yes." Uh, you know, continue. <laughs> he's my hero. Yes. <laughs> yes. Well, he's my hero. well, thanks to DA, I was working on uh, Mogadishu drills on my target because uh, I figured, you know, two to stop him, one in the head. My thought was if it's an armored target, they're probably going to be wearing a full face helmet. But, uh, you know, it does work for zombies too. <laughs> yeah. Slow I, them I down and make the headshot easier. I take my students back to 15 to 20 to 25 yards on headshots on a, we call it a walk back drill. Mm -hmm. And, and I'm like, Hey, the only thing that changes is your distance. So you got to make good, accurate headshots. So now, now Jamie, I don't know. I hadn't read your books yet, but are they the walking dead type zombies? Or are they the world war Z type zombies? Like the zombies on methamphetamine. <laughs> They're a walking dead Romero style zombies. They're split. Okay. Those don't terrify me nearly as much as the World War Z type methamphetamine zombies that, that literally, literally scare the cat crap out of me. I'm just saying. So that's good to know. Well, you know, the uh, zombie apocalypse starts in Springfield. They're all going to be the fast type because they're all on meth anyway. Yeah, they're all on meth in Missouri. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he and I both, Patrick and I both worked in Wyoming. And we took care of many meth zombies up there, for sure. <laughs> yeah. Out of out of all the types of zombies I introduced in the Ragnarok books, the one I get the most grief about is is the uh, the stalkers. I've had people tell me they've had to get out of their bed in the middle of the night to clear the house because of Dude. those stalkers. They're Dude, awesome. Dude, Best those edition. damn things gave me nightmares, bro. I'm I'm not I'm not lying. Those damn things gave me nightmares. They're terrifying. Those yeah, they're, they're, my, they're my favorite kind. Yeah, they're horrifying. Did you guys ever watch uh, Train to Busan? Yeah, I've seen that. Yeah. Oh, all right, that was. Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, that's one of the better movies, in my opinion, as far as the zombie movies go. So, have you also, seen the one with uh, Dave Batista, Army of the Dead? No, I yeah. haven't seen that yet. It's worth watching. Was... It's pretty good. You know, Jamie... I really, <laughs> I really enjoyed that movie. I was on a panel about it the day after. We did a little podcast about it. And the whole time I was defending the movie because everyone was trying to tear it apart, you know, whatever. Well, I, I had some issues with it, but it, it was, all in but large, it was a good movie. I really yeah. enjoyed it. And, you know, I watched it twice since I was, you know, I was going to be doing the podcast about it, but I could see myself watching it quite a few more times in the future. I just thought it was very entertaining. Car Carrie, I'll tell you this much about Army of the Dead. Annette liked it. All right. Well, there you go. Yeah. Well, I can get the yeah. wife to like a can I get the wife to like a zombie movie? They did something. And and see, Angie would probably like that too, then, because Angie is a horror connoisseur. I guess that's a good word to say, because she I don't know if she's plotting on me or not, because she watches all these snaps and everything else. And I mean, I make sure my life insurance is paid up every month, but <laughs> I still think she's not plotting on me a little bit. But she is a horror movie connoisseur, so I'll have to get her to watch that and and get her get her her critique on it. Because she'll be like, "Why are you going in there? What are you doing? Why haven't you reloaded?" There's a battlefield pickup right there. Get their gun. <laughs> no kidding. Uh, you know. Well, there's a lot of the, those kind of moments in the movie. There are, but I still just I really enjoyed it. I think part of it, it too, was a good is movie. I really wanted a new zombie movie that was going to be yeah. fun. I was, just was it? yeah, it was just so it was fun. Yeah. It, it's I, a little different than your standard zombie film, right, but right the action sequences are freaking awesome. <laughs> okay. Yeah. All right. Cause we just watched, what was it? The, the movie, it wasn't a zombie movie, but science fiction with future war, future war with future Chris war. Pratt. Which we just literally just watched that. Do you like Good, it? Yeah. Great yeah. movie. Very Great movie. So. I was I was really impressed by it. I mean, weapons handling, the techniques and everything, tactics, TTPs, whatever, um, all throughout the whole movie were were solid. So really good movie. Yeah. 
that lets me know that we don't want to be uh, in, invaded by aliens and or zombies at the same time. So <laughs> that's a fact. See, that could be a good book right there. Aliens and zombies. Aliens versus zombies. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and we human beings are just kind of in the middle somewhere. So. The battle for the cattle. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. That's a good that's a good title right there. Battle for the cattle. We, we now have the info on Wild Hunt Book Six. <laughs> yeah. Or else or else your chattel, you know. <laughs> one the, I like that. That's good, man. That just popped out off the top of my head. Oh, that would that would that that just happened right now. <laughs> That, that actually could make a, a, a good uh, anthology where you get, you know, 15, 20 zombie authors together and each one take their own crack at it, you know, like three, five, three to five thousand words. Yeah. Everybody has their own their own excerpt short story with a certain one, one certain character. And you tell it from that that POV of that one character. That'd be pretty freaking rad right there. Honestly, I think so. I might have to look into talking to some people about doing that. Yeah. Yeah, that would be I, fun I, to do. yeah it would be. I, I dig that. That's rad. That's not the Blanton's talking. That's that's like real talk. So. <laughs> DX uh, analogy or uh, analogy anthology. You know, <laughs> like oh yeah, oh these are all guests from the show doing this. All yeah. the the drunken anthology. What? <laughs> I mean, there's nothing wrong. Is anybody in here an Archer fan? Like Sterling Archer. Okay, <laughs> Josh, you'll appreciate yeah. this. Glen Gooley Blue. Very nice. Okay. I got these stickers off of Amazon or uh -huh. off of Etsy. Sorry, but the this is off of a Glenfiddich bottle. Glen Gooley was made in 1887, was founded in 1887. That's when Glen Gooley was. So I put it on a on a, a Glenfiddich bottle. So it's got 1887 right there. That's nice. awesome. So there you go. <laughs> a little bit of Scottish goodness for you there. <laughs> you you drink enough of that. You might end up in the danger zone. Danger zone. <laughs> Are we in a zone of danger? Yeah. You can practice your Irish yoga where you pass out in weird <laughs> positions. <laughs> yeah. I like that. Yeah. See, uh, if, in the hospital, where we would have the uh, demented patients that would do all kinds of weird crap. You know, usually the ones that are in restraints or whatever, be in this weird position. We used to call it scrotal yoga. <laughs> you know, Inevitably, you'd come in and they'd be balls out. You'd be trying to figure out how they got, you know, twisted around. <laughs> Struggle yoga. I like that. Very <laughs> How'd you get the beans above the Franks anyway? I was trying to meet my zipper. <laughs> they had a dude one night in the ICU. He was he was on, I don't know, every substance on demand plus alcohol. And he was, I was like, quit sitting up. He's like, you're choking me. And I was like, no, you're choking yourself. I have my thumb right there above his his manubrium. And he was like lifting up. He like, oh, every time I like stop lifting yourself up. You know, that's that's the easiest way to keep yourself from choking yourself because you're choking yourself. I'm, my thumb has not moved. But I can see you just sitting there. Old, <laughs> sitting there like that. You lift up. Oh, you're choking me. No, I'm not choking I mean, you, dude. You're actually, I'm not, but okay. That's <laughs> that's one of my favorite things to do is when you take your fingers and just reach over the top of that arc. Dude, I mean, I'm like, like I've never, sit down. <laughs> never had a stoner try to beat my ass in the ER, but I've had plenty of drunks try to do the same. But whatever. Wow. It is, it is what it is. Yeah. yeah. Steve, Steve, Steve knows and, and Patrick knows, so. Oh, but yeah. they're kind yeah, the, uh, zombies, but you can't shoot them in the head, or else you'll get fired by HR. So, <laughs> thanks. we had one one frequent flyer one night was trying to ball up. He was drunk and a monkey. He was trying to ball up on one of the female officers acting tough, and uh, I went, went over and I, his guy's name was Sonny, and I walked over and I'm like, Sonny. And he's like, What? And I'm like, Can you take your thumb and put it behind your back and touch it to the back of your head? Well, the dumbass tries it. So I just grabbed his thumb and lifted up on it. Grabbed his other hand, rocked it behind his back, cuffed him up. And he goes, man, that wasn't cool. I'm like, well, it's pretty cool from my end. <laughs> pretty well, so, yeah, that was pretty cool. <laughs> That's I awesome. just couldn't believe he fell for it. He's like sticking his arm back there and trying it. 
The herring moron handcuffs are on now. Yeah. So, so Jamie, are your are your zombies cognitive, or are they kind of brainless? Do they have a point? Or are they are they purposeful in their movements? They are brainless. Uh, their their only thing they're focused on is you know finding another a living person to eat, and if they're feeding on someone and the person dies in the process, they lose interest. They go in. They don't finish the body. They go and look for another living person. But they're okay. just single-minded, you know, looking to feed. Um, like I said, they're slow. But I think I write them very, very gory. There's a lot of gore in okay. my books. People comment on that. Okay. There's some, a couple of running jokes about how I don't like fingers and a couple of things like that and eyeballs. But, <laughs> um, yeah, they're mindless. They just want to feed. And one thing that they don't do is if you get scratched by a zombie, it's it's just a scratch. They have to okay. actually bite you with their teeth, or the teeth has to break the skin. Okay, so that doesn't trans scratch doesn't transmit the virus; only a bite can. Okay, yeah. or or whatever it is. Okay, I was wondering about that. Yeah, there is some kind of weird static. I, I hear. Yeah, I'm hearing it too. Yeah, I hear it as well. Well, there it went. Steve, I, yep. I guess it's you. You muted your mic. Well, I guess I'll just no, now it's gone. Unmuted and it's, it's gone. Well, I was wondering, I have my mic, because the pickup on it is so high, I have it kind of off to the side of my... Uh, my it might uh, be your fan tower, your tower on your... Yeah. might be the laptop fan kicking in. I want to the laptop turning on. Let me move the... I'll mute and move the mic and we'll see if it helps. Okay. Damn it, Damn it Bobby. Mute your mic. You're scaring <laughs> Lady Bird. Damn it, Bobby. Damn it, Eight Bobby. o'clock in the morning, you're already not right. If you wasn't my son, I'd hug you. <laughs> Something wrong with that boy. Something wrong with that boy. I don't know what it is. I sell med kits, med kit accessories. <laughs> <laughs> you got Josh. He had to leave camera. What's wrong with you? Oh my god, that was hilarious. Put your fancy dress on, Peggy. We're going to the movie. <laughs> you know, your Hank Hill is good, but your uh, your Carl from Sling Blade's better. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I was casting a guy one time and I was having a fit getting a Catherine because he was uh, he had a prostate issue. And in this in this great impression of Hank Hill, he goes, It's not my fault. I have a narrow urethra. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I was absolutely dying. <laughs> oh. I'm gonna have to stick my finger in your no no spot. We're gonna do this thing called the finger wave. And my favorite thing was like, this is not gonna hurt me as much as it hurts you. Yeah. You might feel a little bit of pressure. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Lord. Uh, that's my potato with that, all right? I do. <laughs> like me some of them French fried potatoes. Mm -hmm. mm. Wow. You got some mustard on that? Mm. I find coffee make me nervous when I drink it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Jamie, you need a you need a spoon. That would be bad. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Carl, what oh, you doing with that lawnmower blade? I am to kill you with it. Mm. <laughs> Sling blade uh, zombies. Uh, you know, my, that would be my dad is a is a huge you know, Doc Holiday fan, and he loves uh, the scene in in uh, Tombstone when Billy Bob Thornton and uh, Wyatt go toe to toe, and he keeps slapping him. And uh, I was uh, I was telling my dad the story that DA told us about uh, how. Uh, uh, Billy Bob came up with Carl's voice about you know his anger with Doc Hall with a uh, uh, Val Kilmer. Val Kilmer. You know, yeah, I'm gonna kill that son bitch. I'm and, gonna kill uh, that son bitch. <laughs> I, I did that. To my dad, I thought he was gonna absolutely die. He, he was coughing and, no. and, and sputtering, and he's like, "That's not right." I'm like, it happened. <laughs> Y'all gonna appreciate this? Oh, there you go. Oh, I like yeah. That. Is That's that a awesome. sticker or did you have that put on the PMAG? 
had to put on a pee bag by my buddies in Texas, by my buddies down in uh, at Bliss, down in Bryan, Texas. Mm-hmm. So they they did four mags for me. So I numbered them Doc One through Doc Four. So that's awesome. That's awesome. thank you. Yeah, I met I met a uh, um, uh, uh, Buck Taylor who played Creek. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we, with the shot show yeah we met him in shot show and then we met him down in my wife and daughter met him down in tombstone last year during doc holidays and awesome. me and him talked for several for about 30 minutes or so he's a real big gun guy but he said val kilmer is like he's like he's like dude's a tremendous tr- actor but he's a weird dude and he said like i'm not the surprised first four weeks, yeah i'm not either he said he was in character the whole time he was in Doc Holiday character the whole time, and he looked over at, at Buck Taylor and said, "We have known each other for some time now. You may call me John." <laughs> I mean, did it in his in the whole Doc Holiday accent and everything, you know. And he's like, he looked at him and like, "This some bitch is weird." But <laughs> true artisan, he's a true artisan. He he he's a true he's a That's true. Artisan, you know? He. Lately, though, he has fallen the hell apart. Have you seen him yeah. lately? Yeah. Good lord, yeah. I don't know if it's alcohol or what, but who? He looks got throat, throat cancer. Well, yeah, yeah. Throat cancer. Uh, yeah, he had like a total yeah. resection throat of his cancer. neck and yeah. everything, man. Ooh. So I wasn't aware of that. <laughs> Poor guy. He, he made it. He the talks here now. I'm here at um, at Wizard World in Nashville, and. Uh, I would. I didn't pay to go in and see him, but I got a glimpse of him, and he doesn't look any better in real life than he does in the pictures. I mean, it's man, too just, bad. I feel bad yeah. for him. Yeah, like uh, we were down there. We met uh, Peter Scirocco and Buck Taylor, but they said Michael Bean has a place down in Bisbee, which is twenty minutes south of Tombstone, close to the border. But he'll come up into Tombstone and just hang out. So Johnny Ringo actually comes and hangs out there. Oh, that's and, cool. Yeah, it's pretty oh. rad. So, pretty cool stuff. But yeah, I'm a I'm a big Tombstone fan. So maybe get some Tombstone zombies. That'd be kind of that's cool. one. Of my, yeah. I wanted to do an Old West zombie story. Yeah, you know, I rad. I had saw. Um, it's a cheesy, terrible movie, but it, it is also good. And you know, one of those, the uh, Abraham Lincoln versus vampires. You ever watch that? It is. It is a cheesy help but it's like good because of that for some reason but Dude, it got me got me fun. thinking what's that it's so much fun it is uh mm-hmm. but it got me thinking it'd be cool if there was like a, a zombie story set in the civil war uh like you know one or two of the battles that were a little more or less unknown you could write you know some something based in there i thought would be kind of neat yeah. wasn't there an abraham lincoln versus the zombies too yeah but that one wasn't nearly as fun that one, that one was kind really? of, yeah. The second one? No, it was completely separate. It was okay. just another. It was it maybe a, a sea horror movie, maybe. <laughs> it was bad. <laughs> Quite a bit yeah. lower down the alphabet, anyway. Yeah, but the the, the vampire one was good. Yeah, we well, you could do one on the Battle of Kennesaw, Kennesaw Mountain, Georgia. Uh, that was where my great great grandfather was taken prisoner. Uh, by the Union forces because he was a, in the Seventh Mississippi Infantry on that day, and he got wounded and taken prisoner during the, uh, as we call it down south, the War of Northern Aggression. Yeah, but but he My uh, he, was, it. <laughs> he was taken prisoner. And you know the ironic thing is, D. I don't know if you know this. I got all his muster records and everything from the Department of Archives in Mississippi, and this dude. If you were captured as a as a Confederate soldier by the Union, as a prisoner of war, you got paid a federal pension from the United States government as a prisoner of war. Huh. Against yeah. the very for 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 whom the very government you were fighting against. Huh. So I thought that was highly ironic. But he he got paid twenty back in the day. It was like twenty five dollars a month. He died in like nineteen nineteen. But he he got paid a pension by the federal government as a prisoner of war, even huh. though he fought against that same very federal government. I thought that was kind of cool. Kind of sounds like the one system for today. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's pretty cool. I've never heard of anything like that. 
Yeah, it yeah. was it was crazy. But he was and he was a wall every year during crop season. I saw his muster records. He was a wall every year during crop season. They did come back to front lines. And, and <laughs> gotta get those crops in. Priorities, yeah, man. Yeah, gotta get those crops whole time. In. Yeah, we were we were sharecroppers, man. So we were poor as dirt. So and my daddy used to say, you know, the folks on welfare look down on us. So yeah, we were we were <laughs> our was extremely poor. So yeah, it was it was ironic. But yeah, a civil war zombie civil war zombie book would be something kind of rad too. I've got an uh, idea that I'm, I've been working on uh, for a short story. I don't think I want to do it as a full blown book, but it'd probably be a ten to twelve thousand word short story. And uh, I want to I want to do a series of short stories that are like Codename Wild Hunt Origins uh, from the mm. history leading back. And I want to do yep. one of one of the precursors of the team during the Civil War when a Union and and uh, Confederate unit units have to combine forces to stop a trip. <laughs> I like that. I like that. That'd be kind of cool, man. Um, and you could even go back to like Middle Ages, uh, you know, Eastern Europe, mm -hmm. uh, Romania, whatever, when Logues, you know, the, the vampire bunch came out. That'd be kind of mm -hmm. rad. Too. And how they how they moved over to, you know, Scotland, Ireland, England, Wales, whatever. Logue's one of those newer characters that I get a lot of feedback on. People love yeah. like love that idiot for some reason. <laughs> Well, I think people have a, ro a romanticism thing with, with vampires as a whole. And I think Jamie as an author, you can appreciate this too. You know, it's like always with the vampires, you know, if you look at all the Dracula stuff, it's always Dracula's he's, he's okay. So he, he sucks your blood, whatever, but he's, he's looking for his lost love, you know, and, and Angie and I have this conversation all the time because she's a vampire aficionado too. And it's always like, well, the dude just wants to find his bride, man. You know, I feel sorry for the, the guy because all these jack wagons are trying to screw with him because he's just trying to find his chick, man. That's all it is. He's just trying to find his boss. Well, maybe if he stopped eating folks along the way, they might be a little less lenient. <laughs> maybe. Okay, that, that's, a, that's, a, that's a by point, you know, but I mean, you know, it, it's one of those things where it is, it's, you know, collateral damage. But it's one of those things where he's always trying to find his lost love. But I think that could be a that could be another another spinoff. You know, you could have a load spinoff on that. So I'm just saying. What the hell do I know, Steve? I'm just a nurse. <laughs> <laughs> that needs to be a t-shirt. It is a t-shirt. <laughs> is it? it? Yeah. Well, uh, another it, it, another t-shirt is you you can't you can't cure stupid. But you can sedate the crap out of it. <laughs> so. oh. Yeah, the, another one yeah. would be uh, be, just because I'm a nurse doesn't mean I care about you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, I was uh, helping one of the nurses do a or narc count yesterday, where we you know, they go through our our uh, omni cell machine and you know, we keep all the narcotics and we have to count you know how many of each drug we have in there, you know, because they keep a very tight log on the controlled substances, right? And uh, because, you know, we're a, uh, in an emergency setting, we carry several uh, doses of uh, rectal diazepam, you know, to take somebody out of a seizure. And uh, I said, uh, I made the comment, you know, the two words you never want to hear at the party you're having. And she goes, what's that? And I said, Valium Enema. And <laughs> she just kind of looked at me. She goes, how do I work with you? And she walked out. That was it. She just walked away. I'm standing with the open... Bug vault and all this stuff. It was like, yeah. how, how do you apply that? Hmm. <laughs> it's, it's topical. It's not, it's, it's <laughs> not going to be fun for anybody. The the recipient or or, or the giver. Either either one. It's, it's person. Somebody's going to get some relief. Yeah, exactly. The, the person yeah, who's yeah. is going to need therapy, though. I can guarantee you that. This reminds me of the last intelligible words my mother spoke to me, and I'm a little reluctant, but I can't resist. My mom died of cancer in 2002, and I was her caregiver, and she was home on hospice for two months. And during the night, the, the pain would always increase, and I couldn't increase the morphine, so they gave me um, suppositories. The what? It's not Demerol. It's the other one. And... Um, 
she, about two o'clock in the morning, she woke up and she was just in agony. And it was fairly dark in the room and I didn't want to turn on an extra light. So I put on the glove and a little bit of the little grease on my finger and I rolled her on her side and I got the suppository. And the last words my mother said to me were, don't put that there. I missed. Uh, yep. Yep. And I called yep. the nurse in hysterics. <laughs> my finger yep. just had sex with my mom. <laughs> what yeah. am I going to yeah. do? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And my, my mom's last words to me, uh, when she saw me walk in the room, she died of cancer in 06. And I'd flown in from Wyoming from the hospital he and I worked at. And I flew, I flew in, got to the, I drove from New Orleans to Mississippi. And she saw me. She said, there's my baby. And and I, I was giving her some, I was putting some chapstick on her lip. And I said, your lips look dry. And she said, yeah, I need some chapstick. She said, well, hurry up and give it to me. Do, do the chapstick now. You know, and my mom, that was totally out of my mom's character. So that was, it's funny how you remember those those last, those last words, you know, because it was like so out of character for her, but hurry up and put it on my lips. You know, my lips are dry. My lips are cracking. So it, it, it's, uh, it's funny how you remember the stuff like that, the weird stuff like that. So prayers to you. God bless you, Naomi. Yeah, Naomi, you're a very good person for taking care of your mom. Uh, yeah, God bless, yeah, for sure. Well, she was my for mom, sure. but yeah. I haven't spoken to this finger in years. So... <laughs> When I when I go, I want to go peacefully in my sleep like my grandfather, not not screaming in terror like his passengers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah. You sound like some of the you sound like some of the jokes he's told me today. <laughs> Holy shit, this dude has got such horrible jokes. Oh my god. Like, like one of my favorites, my you know what my father's last words were to me? You know, son, that gun's loaded. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my God. Well, Naomi, you made oh. me think of something real quick. Uh, a long time ago, there was a guy I knew. He was a nurse. He had to he had to glove up, and there was a little old lady that needed that had a uh, she was fecally impacted, so he had to glove up and basically dig out, is what we called it. And uh, all of a sudden, the poor lady just starts moaning and moaning. It was just an inner city ER, so it was only behind a curtain, and. Uh, he finally looked at this little old lady and he says, ma'am, what is wrong? She said, you're in the wrong hole. <laughs> Poor Jamie's so traumatized by that. She's like, oh, my God. <laughs> like, I know how what I the so hell have I gotten know. myself into today? <laughs> yeah. So, okay. So I'm sorry. I just, uh, I know how yeah, I, I felt. I apologize. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> We have we have we have many stories. Yeah. <laughs> many stories. Channeling my Larry the Cable Guy. Lord, I apologize. <laughs> Lord, I apologize. I'm in the beginning. Yeah, that's why we haven't been back on that radio station in California. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that didn't last very long, did it? <laughs> no, no, it didn't last very long. This they were they were standing by too much because the bleep button yeah. sounded like Morris code. Do, 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 do. Yeah. This is this is this is his first podcast, probably. By the way, so probably my last. One. Maybe his last. Yeah. Well, <laughs> well, hope, hope we haven't ruined you. Do you need me to spell out my name for the restraining order? Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> well, Jamie, I just bought both your books, so there you go. So I'm gonna I'm gonna be uh, be checking those out. Awesome! Thank you so much. I hope you enjoy them. You're welcome. You're welcome. I'm sure I will. I'm sure I will. It'll be fun. Yeah, I love. I like. I like. We you know like D and I have talked. We we support. We support any any of these authors and. It's like me as a small business, you know, we have to keep supporting each other and spreading the word and telling each other about it because otherwise, you know, what is there to gain from it? You know, we're, we're trying to just get people pointed in the right direction and people, people that like this stuff. You know, I've had guys, you know, that one of the guys on, on one of my, in one of my classes, I was talking about DA about crypto, crypto horror. And he's like, he, his ears kind of perked up. He's like crypto horror. <laughs> I was like, yeah. I said, check this guy out. And the next day in class, he's like, dude, I'm getting his books. So it's one of those things I, you know, we as you're another author 
that I can recommend to my students who who like that kind of stuff. So absolutely. Yeah, I appreciate it. I, yeah, I, have a, work. I got a question real quick on that note because I was looking at picking them up too, but I, I have Kindle and Kindle Unlimited. How does that affect you guys as authors? Because a lot of times it says read on Kindle Unlimited for free. Does does Amazon kick back stuff to you guys for those or with Kindle Unlimited oh, yeah. you get paid a percentage, but it's not as much as if a purchase. Gotcha. Well, I'll be buying it then. You get paid yeah. by number of pages read, and it works out to be about about half of a of, a, of an actual download. And then you probably wouldn't get it from me very soon because it takes me forever to read. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think Patrick, I think Pat here is he's going to be downloading. He just got him right now too. Yeah. Well, Jamie, I uh, uh, I got a little buzz, so it took me a while, but uh, I just bought both of your books too. And DA, I'm gonna I'm gonna buy some of yours too. Awesome, yeah. thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, thanks. The Wild Hunt books and the Apex Predator books okay. and the Ragnarok Rising books. That's uh, yeah. Yep. Dark I just dot com. <laughs> just gotta slip oh, slip it, it in there. <laughs> just wait. You know, us, 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 those those guys over at All Tower Media are pretty awesome too. <laughs> <laughs> uh, hey, DA, you got Did you get your tracking information on your package coming in? Uh, no, not yet. Okay. It mm. should be coming in to you. So, yeah. But, Jamie, if you give me any kind of medical stuff, I mean, I was a Air Force flight medic. I deployed with 82nd, 7th Special Forces Group, all those guys, um, and ER nurse, critical care, all that kind of jazz. So, if you never need medical stuff, oh, I mean, I'll, be, I'll be happy to give you some some gratis info. Oh, I it's appreciate it. Hat. Like and I said, I, there's – there's going to be some injuries coming up in book three. So yeah, well, well, look me up if you if you need any any information, me or Patrick, either one. Um, I teach up at a company called Sig Sauer um, up in New Hampshire. I'm a firearms instructor and I do tech medical tactical medical stuff up there in New Hampshire. So I can I'll help you out if you need any if you need any assistance. If you got plenty of help, cool. I'm just throwing my my hat in the ring. As another one to uh, to get some information from, if you ever oh, yeah. need, I really appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah. It's no, yeah, no I, I don't know anything about the medical stuff. I would just be googling. I, I need someone to consult with. Yeah, don't don't consult WebMD because everything's cancer. Everything exactly. is one hundred percent. So speaking and with, of hypochondriac, what? WebMD is my best friend. Yeah, whiskey prevents cancer. Da. I'm just saying. Well, then I should be cancer free for eternity. <laughs> All right, Steve, where's your canteen cup, man? I, I've got it right here. I just wasn't using it. God damn it. Huh? I'll fix it in a minute. Oh, there you go. Yeah, be... That's better. There you go. See, it, I told I, I was to bring his canteen cup from Wyoming. With a canteen cup, it's harder to gauge how much I put in there. And that gets dangerous about hour four of the podcast. But Yes. Right. Yeah. That's okay. Yeah. I mean, come on. Hey, so, uh, sobriety's for amateurs. Hey, D8, check your Facebook real quick. Alcoholics Anonymous is for quitters too, but you know, yeah. they go to meetings. I'm not going to meetings. I'm in. I'm in triple A, by the way. I'm hardcore. So. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> Hey DA, I got one for you, man. I got, okay. I got, I got some scotch for you. Wow. Next time we're together, next time we hang out. Oh, all right. <laughs> all right. <he's> yeah. <laughs> all right. All right. All right. All right. Yeah. Well, it's I, like it's like the wee tears of angels sliding down your th down your gullet. I can never drink scotch again. It's, scotchy, no, no, it's glorious. Well, you, you know they the, that uh, the whiskey is an Irish Gael a Scotch Gaelic word for water of life. Aqua vitae, and I, I went to a restaurant in Edinburgh called Uska Bay, which is which is like primitive Gaelic for water of life. Mm -hmm. So Uska Bay, yeah, um, yeah absolutely. I've been on here with Stephen Kinney uh, last week. Uh, it was uh, you know Gordon lives just outside of uh, was it Glasgow? Yeah, he lives just outside yeah. Glasgow, and uh, he was really really neat to. To, to listen to because he, you know, uh, you know, between the accent and his wild sense of humor, it was absolutely amazing. 
And uh, those guys are amazing, man. Scotland is by far my favorite country. So, yeah, not just because I have family there, but yeah, it, it's an awesome country. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Scott is a red from Mississippi. Oh, damn it, Bobby, shut up. <laughs> I don't know. I still like the, uh, the med kit and med kit accessories line. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's the one that, that broke me. Now, so were, he, he's half Japanese and, and half, half American. Six foot one, half Japanese, and I got a southern accent, so I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> He's he, he's a photographer, so he's got a good he's got a good idea for uh, for a, a cough table book. What's in, what's in it? Oh yeah, oh that was a yeah. big ears and bad teeth. A photographic history of the English people. <laughs> <laughs> oh, That's hilarious. <laughs> Crack on then. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and good fitting. good. Good to see y'all for sure. Jamie, I noticed you're not drinking. No, my little one's still up, so I'm gonna have to go pretty soon and get her ready for bed and stuff. So that's awesome. night. Maybe next time. How old's your little one, Jamie? She's six. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah, my, yeah. my youngest is uh almost sixteen. And we just had the grandbabies leave at like midnight last night. So, yeah, and our, our, our four of the five grandbabies leave. So, spoiling them rotten, Carrie. I was, dude, I had them loaded up on s'mores and Mountain Dew before they left. So, <laughs> we're all was, jacked up on Mountain Dew, exactly, man. <laughs> I, was, I was gonna break out the crystal meth, but their mom said no. The only thing would have been better if you gave them all Moms a puppy. Mom's is such a freaking killjoy, man. God. We just sent yeah, our they, two-year-old granddaughter a tambourine set. Oh, that's that's awesome. Awesome. <laughs> it's like a drum set. They're like, Papa, she got Papa, that last year. They're like, Papa, where's your drum set? My wife's like, no. <laughs> yeah. You know, I never minded all the loud toys. But it might be just because I have one little one. The other one's 20. She's my stepdaughter, but, you know, she's mine. But I wasn't yeah, here for her when she was little. So <laughs> since I just have, you know, my six-year-old, the loud toys never bothered me. We bought her loud toys, you know. But maybe if I had a few of them running around, it would drive me crazy. Yeah, dude. Yeah. With four of them, Papa Carrie, Gigi, Papa, Gigi, Papa, Gigi, because my wife is <laughs> Gigi. And it's like I'm I'm today me and my wife are sitting out on a deck, you know, having a bloody Mary, and we're like, This is actually kind of nice that you know <laughs> but they're heading back to Fort Benning. My son in law is in third Ranger Battalion out in Fort Benning, so they're oh, heading back awesome. that way. Yeah, they'll be back that they'll be out there. They should have got there now. So uh but yeah. Jamie, you were you were talking about the interactions with the teenage characters in, in your stories and how you know it, it's a great dynamic that it puts in there. You know, the youngest is almost 14, and my uh, my nephew is I think about a year older than him, but he's staying with us for a few days, just, you know, having a sleepover with his cousin, you know, and the two of them were playing a video game, and I'm listening to the dialogue between the two of them, and it was cracking me up, because, like, in some ways, they were so mature in the way they were talking, and then they would start dogging each other, and they had the most creative insults that I didn't even understand. You know, listening to them trash-talking each other, playing this game, I'm like, oh, that's funny. You need a translator, but God, it's funny. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's why I had the the boys in my story. They're like best friends. They don't insult each other so much, but they both have older sisters that are about 14. So that's Joey cool. and his sister are constantly trying to one up each other. And so that was fun. I, you know, used things that I've heard, things that my older daughter has said. I Googled things. I talked to other people to make sure it all. That ring true, but to have like the perfect yeah. insults for them to go back and forth. That was a lot of fun. Yeah. They still do it. I mean, they're still doing it in book two. But I'm telling you, you haven't lived until you've played Cards Against Humanity with your kids. Oh my that God. God. That is a fact. My daughter, like I said, she's almost 16, and I still look up. I, I go, what did you say? 
And I'm Urban Dictionary. <laughs> I, I do that like, too. What the hell does that mean? But she's my she's my road trip buddy. So for the last two last two classes I've done in Texas, she's driven with me or ridden with me, and which is awesome because she gets through her class. But she's my she's my DJ and my Urban Dictionary translator. I'm like, dude, I am so freaking old. What the hell did you just say? I have no idea. I'm about to be 50 this year, and I'm like, what? I have no idea what you just said. <laughs> it's like called, you're speaking words. Yeah. I just like, know it. Yeah. It's like my godfather during liturgy in the Greek Orthodox Church. I'm like, I have no idea what you're saying. It sounds good, but I have no idea what you're saying. <laughs> oh. It's like having a conversation with Rich, too. Yeah, exactly. Just say, speak English, concern it. Uh, sorry. <laughs> run around. <laughs> the frontier gibberish. <laughs> exactly. Gibberish. Like on the like on the um, hot fuzz when they had to bring the guy to translate from Cornish. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you got a permit for this one? Yeah. For this one. One. He does for this one. Wait, what does he mean this one? <laughs> wait, 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 what? By the power of Grayskull. Yeah. That, look, that looks like the cave that we're in now. If you go into his gun cave, that looks like the cave that we're in now in my, in my cave. Nice. Yeah. Well, we're uh, yeah. entertained uh, when we had you on the show the first time, Carrie, and you paused everything in the middle of the broadcast to go access your gun safe to pull something out. <laughs> and start uh, the Thomas, is, the thing apart. Thomas is like, what? I'm like, I want a gun safe in my office. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, when we, when I guess we, technically I do. I have a safe in here where I keep my guns, but it's a traditional safe, you know. Yeah, when my wife and I bought this house, I was like, "This room is mine. No one else is getting this room. This is mine. This is this is the safe room." So she's like, "All right, all right, good enough." And people are like, "How many guns do you have?" I'm like, "I don't know. I lost them all in a boating accident, but whatever." Same. It's yeah. tragic. <laughs> it's, it's horrible. Horrible. Damn boats. Damn boats. I hate them. <laughs> so Jamie, as far as your uh as far as your characters go, what do the age ra age ranges vary? Uh there's four kids, teenagers basically. The boys are 12, 13, and the two girls are 14. Um, the parents, well, one of the survivors they picked up along the way, a woman, she's in her twenties. The parents are about 37. Um, the oldest person in the book is around 50. It's uh, not one of the family members. It's someone that got picked up along the way. But it's basically you're looking at, you know, like husband, wife, and two kids, and another husband, wife, and two kids, and then some people that they were able to save along their way as they tried to get home. Okay. All right. Yeah, I'm looking forward to reading your books to see the character progression. So that's, I, yeah. I, was I was telling DA, you know, that's one of the things I've enjoyed about his books is watching the characters actually progress and develop, you know, his character development has been huge uh, in these books. And I think that's what makes the stories more enjoyable, more readable and more believable, you know, whenever you see the, the, the development of these folks. So yeah. that was really important to me in writing it. Um, I hope I accomplished it. People have said that I have, but I tried really hard, you know, even though the first two books are just the first six days, so much happens in that time. Yeah. You know, the zombies and other things, but I mean, it's the yeah. zombie apocalypse. So, the, you know, these kids go from, or teenagers go from, it affects them, I think, the greatest as far as having to kind of grow up overnight. Yeah. But... Fine. It's not perfect for any of them. And one of them really struggles. Like she's terrified and she freezes up in things. And, you know, you see her start to progress a little bit, you know, as time goes on. And I really try to, that's a, that's a, an important part of the characters for me, all of the characters in, well, in the whole story. Well, that makes sense. Cause not every character is going to be a stone killer. I mean, they're yeah. people are, people are going to react differently. Yeah. Yeah, you're talking the whole human response uh, aspect there, and that that's really cool because some people are going to run to the sound 
a gunfire and some people are going to run away or away from the sound of gunfire. So that's, that's huge. Yeah. Yeah. It's like the main character. I'm sorry. Or the main character, Max, he's, he wants to save everybody, you know, but he's just a construction worker. He's not, you know, law enforcement or ex military or trained with anything. He's just, you know, your everyday average father, husband, construction worker, but he finds a way to fight his way out of downtown towards home. Yeah. Well, and that's what we call in the military. We call that a warrior mindset. Mm-hmm. And I think if you, if you imbue your characters, another big word there for you, if you imbue your characters with a warrior mindset, uh, that's something people who have been there, done that can, can act absolutely appreciate. And that makes your characters much more, much more believable uh, on the, on the downstream, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. You know, I agree. Call, yeah. It, it, it's just like, you know, I got to, whatever the, whatever the task is in front of me, I got to get the job done no matter what that task is. And I think that's commendable for sure. For sure. I like that you've chosen such a quick pacing too. <clears throat> you know, the, uh, the, the zombie apocalypse is scary as hell anyway. Uh, you know, no matter who, who writes it and, and whatever, whatever you speed your zombies move at. But with the fact that all of your action takes place over the span of a few short days, you don't have time to process that. You know, you're, yeah. you're, you're still basically in shock as you're reacting. And uh, I've noticed that some of the stories that, that uh, the new series I'm picking up as a result of this show, uh, I, I like the ones that have that kind of pace to it. Uh, yeah, I've been working my way through Sean uh, Chesser's uh, series, and I think I'm on book five right now, and it's nine days after the apocalypse started. You know, five books in, we're at day nine. Okay, you know, nine days in, I'm barely able to process the fact that my vacation is ending. You know, if I take a week <laughs> off, and 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 the, these people are 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 you know, the world has disintegrated, everything has gone to shit, and they're trying to save each other. You know, and uh, I, I I think I'm really looking forward to reading your stuff. I've been interrupting Sean's series because I'm finding new authors, and you're you're high on my list. You've got me uh, very very excited to read these. And uh, like oh, I said, I, I bought them I bought them uh, yesterday. I just haven't had a chance to read it. So. Thank you. I really appreciate it. Well, we appreciate you. I will I will definitely say hi, everybody, by the way. Um, Thomas? I Thomas. will drink to you. I'm drinking <laughs> my McAllen. And I want to say thank you to DA and uh, to Mr. Hernandez because I – and all of the authors that we've been bringing on. Uh, but I started filling up my bookshelf. And uh, I am looking forward to uh, starting some of yours. Oh, thank you. Um, Sorry. <clears throat> Got to get this coke going. <laughs> took a little bit too big, too big of a drink. Right there. No, I was just going to say, I, I've got to get ready to head out here. My little oh, no. one's up a little late tonight. <laughs> well, um, you know, thank you for coming on. Um, heck yeah! One more time, yes. shout out, shout out the books and the links. Yeah, let me get the links again. I'll post the links again in the chat. Yeah, uh, it's, or go ahead. Go ahead and uh, and just uh, you know, give us give us your information again and tell us about the books one more time, and <coughs> we will go from there. The series is called Chronicles of the Undead. The first book is Urban Gridlock. The second book, which just came out on June 25th, is Suburban Jungle. And I'm working on book three now. Nice. So that'll be out sometime later this year. Nice. As you know, uh, DA has been keeping me up with a whole bunch of books that he's, he's thrown out in his universe. And I am now waiting for him to come out with some more stuff patiently. And in the meantime, I cannot wait to check out Urban Jungle. And keeping it up, keeping it up. Oh, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. I'm excited for you guys to read it. Yes. Thank you for Absolutely. joining us on our, our show tonight. It's been a pleasure to have you on, and and uh, uh, very entertaining. I, I I think it's 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 great to have you. Thank you. I've had a lot of fun. I hate to go. Anytime you'd like to come back, just let us know. And whenever you've got another book coming out, let us know, and we'll help. We're happy to help you promote. Oh, absolutely. Thank you. 
Really Anytime. And hey, Jamie uh, and DA, Steve, I don't know if you know or not. This is Angie. Hi, Angie. Hi, Angie. Hi, Hi. Hi. Hi Angie. This is also known as Hot Wife. She is, uh, <laughs> she is, uh, she can light a cigarette off her face right now, but she is, uh, she's in the books with, uh, the, the, the uh, Apex Predator books. Yes. Yeah. So this is, this is my wife, Angie. So a face, a face of the character that y'all oh, might love see. It. Love it. And she's not showing her face too much because she's <laughs> super shy. But <laughs> I'm like, come nice down here. Like, hey, oh. Nice to meet y'all. <laughs> nice to meet you. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So we literally, we literally grew up together uh, two and a half miles down the road from each other in Mississippi. Uh, not related. Not related. <laughs> <laughs> well, it is Mississippi. We met at a, we met at a family reunion. Exactly. <laughs> Define uh, related. Yeah, she's only my fourth cousin, so I don't count. Oh, okay. but, uh, Mississippi related or Arkansas related? Yeah, yeah. Arkansas related. She's got all her teeth, so it's Mississippi related, not Arkansas related. <laughs> that's where the that's where the word toothbrush came in because it's like just one, one tooth. I know. Tooth. <laughs> Otherwise, it'd be teeth brush. But yeah, <laughs> so that's uh, that's my, that's my beautiful my beautiful uh, cohort, my shield maiden. I should say. Oh, so. that, Ar- that is sweet. I love it. Arkansas oh, is sweet. where deliverance was a love story with a tragic ending. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's you like Romeo and Ju- Juliet for Arkansas. You, you got just, a real pretty mouth, boy. <laughs> you just put a whole different <laughs> spin. Mouth. When you said yeah. toothbrush, you gave me a whole different spin on what Thanks. the origins of the tooth fairy are. You got to keep old Ooh. chumpy clean. There you go. There you go. Yeah, but that's that's my better half. But Jamie, it was a pleasure meeting you. I look forward Very to nice. your yeah. books for sure. Thanks. Yeah. It was great to meet you too. Meet everybody. Great. Thanks again for having me on. Nice meeting you, Jamie. Oh, thanks Thank for you. being here. All right. Well, I'll catch Bye. you guys later. All right. You have Please a great do. night. Thank you for coming. Bye. Thank Bye, Jamie. you. Have a good Bye. night. You too. Well, I am late to the party as usual. Uh, you got yeah, some to catch up on. Yeah, well, you son. Well, we we reopened the restaurant full service. So nice, now, dude. Um, we're instead of closing at eight, we're closing at nine, and it just pushes back everything for me. So I got an extra hour. Like I've been working like uh, like six days a week, fourteen plus hour days, and nice. it's just nuts. So That's I don't awesome. get to yeah. join in all these extra shows. Where's your restaurant? Ladies and gentlemen, go go ahead. I'm sorry about that. Go ahead. No, where is your uh, restaurant at, Dream? Uh, it is in Hammond, Louisiana. Oh, uh, we're not too far from you. Uh, we just got voted best uh, Vietnamese in the North Shore uh, oh, nice. here in Louisiana, so we are very excited about that. That's uh, fourth year running, and super excited. Oh, I see the the popping of the bottle. What is that? The closer you hold it does not mean I can see it any better. <laughs> I, I, was, I was trying, man. I was trying. It's look. A, look a, at it. It's a, it's a <laughs> red. A pothic red. Oh, I've heard that's okay. really good. I've heard it. Um, so good. There is a brand called Menage a Trois. Uh, of course there is. Apparently, they uh, make a very good wine. Uh, my wife's <laughs> friends <laughs> love better. that stuff. This one's better than Menage a Trois. Okay. I will yeah. keep that in mind. Topic Red is great if you're already drunk when you start drinking it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I've heard that. I've heard that. <clears throat> yeah. See, sadly, I'm allergic to most alcohol. Like, I've had to stop drinking what I have been. I start getting red and sometimes even tight in the jaw. Yeah. Um, oh, but should make you very can, popular with uh, certain people. I can drink mead, though, without a problem. I have I'm three Irish, bottles so I that right alcohol. Unfortunately, oh. this one is empty. I got a bottle of that <laughs> in my freezer. This is the best mead I've ever drank. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't yeah. know that was actually still a thing. I didn't know what? people still made mead. Oh, yeah. 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 You can watch YouTube videos on It's supposedly, mead. yeah, I was going to say, it's supposed to be pretty easy to make. I want to try making my own. I teach you a class out in Oklahoma called Mead Hall Range. And the the owner of that place has like 
I don't know how many hundreds of pounds of honey because he's a beekeeper, but he makes mead. Nice. Yeah. Holy. Is that a Viking horn you were holding up? Yeah, it's we both drink, horn. drinking horn. Nice. Yeah. I yeah, almost that's not what I thought it was. Brass cap. I know. At uh, first, I didn't think that's what it was either. <laughs> mine <laughs> is a uh, secret. <laughs> mine yeah, is peeling thinking, a little bit on the. <laughs> mine started to peel a little bit. I think Neoma got excited for a second there. Just yes, for a second. <laughs> we were like, wait a second. I haven't seen that one yet. <laughs> right on, cowboy. Oh, I God. It on. <laughs> wow. Oh, yeah. boy. Oh, uh, Steve, you understand that now why I don't drink you alcohol. Me. <laughs> exactly. <This is> <laughs> take, that, take Bobby to bed. <laughs> Take Bobby to bed, damn it. There's like somebody <laughs> sent that to me while we were on the show, and I had to send it to Carrie and you. I don't think Carrie's seen it yet. Oh, man. Uh, later on, Carrie, uh, pull up your uh, your Facebook messenger. I sent you a uh, cartoon. All right, right on. Right on. Oh, Lord, I feel like I just got it. Oh, my God, oh. boy. Take that boy to bed. Lost- I'll send it to you if I have it. That was my reaction, Gosh, Josh. <laughs> oh boy, let me see. My reaction exactly. Oh man, <laughs> that is gold. Oh, I'm gonna have go. to use that. It's okay if they're doing that, as long as uh, both hands aren't on each shoulder. Hmm. <laughs> when you ask your doctor before the 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 uh, the exam where do you where should i put my pants and he says just toss them in the corner with mine that's there's a problem <laughs> <laughs> oh, I just thought, that's freaking hilarious dude okay See, we had a flight surgeon that got in a lot of trouble with this stuff because when he was doing the flight physicals on guys you know you gotta do the old you gotta do the old finger wave up the hoo-hoo and he would, you know, have one hand on their shoulder and be, you know, gloved up doing the, the prostate exam and a down under with his other hand, but he would throw a fake hand with a bag. No. <laughs> that is awesome. <laughs> you might feel some pressure. He'd throw their hand up and feel the other and feel the, the pressure. <laughs> What's happening? Yeah. What's happening here? They, they didn't take too kindly with that. Oh, as long God. as the guy didn't go, oh, yeah. It's okay. <laughs> no sense of humor. Come on now. That's usually $40 extra. <laughs> you know, I, I got Hold a, on, a Doc. Little, I ain't done yet. I got a little bit of a funny story. Uh, when I went to MEPS uh, before I joined the Coast Guard, you know, I, you, you guys who have served, you remember MEPS. It's an all-day clusterfuck yep. where you basically sit around all day. I think I could have done all of that in 20 minutes, but I was there for 12 hours. 100%. Yeah. Well, I That's go in and I go in and see this one old doctor. He's probably in his 80s. Can't hardly see his face due to the, the lemon prune kind of grimace. And I'm like, what the hell's going on? He's like, turn around, bend over, drop your drawers, spread your cheeks. I'm like, alright. And I'm looking <laughs> through... And I can see why his face, I think every asshole he looked at, it just got tighter and tighter. He's like, <laughs> you're good. Go. <laughs> like, all right. <laughs> you should have winked at him. Home. <laughs> oh, my God. We uh, we used to have this, uh, when I worked for the on the med search for, we had this uh, old nurse that was, she was severely visually impaired. Uh, she was nearly blind in one eye. And the other one, she could only see it at really close distance. So my first night shift, I, I'm on the floor uh, following another nurse around for orientation. And um, he goes, why don't you go to you know, room five and see if you can help? We'll call her Betty because I don't want to say her name on the air. And I'm like, okay, so I'll go see what Betty's doing. So I go in the room and you know the beds lie perpendicular to the, to the doorway. And so you can see the whole patient, you know. Well, she's standing at like the midpoint of the bed, and I see from her back, I see her head going. <laughs> and of course, I immediately stop. I'm like, what is happening? Oh. And why am I being sent in here to help? 
Well, I figured out she's trying to start a catheter on this guy. You're tagging in. I was afraid. Well, she's trying to start a catheter on this guy, and she can't see it. So she's moving her head to get her guy in focus. And so, you know, she's... (laughs) And so... Getting a catheter from Jack Elam. (laughs) Also, it's like Mr. Magoo trying to start a catheter. Oh my and God. so she's, she's uh, goes a couple inches above this guy's junk. And I finally pulled her out. I said, yo, Betty, let me see if I can. You know, I put her out in the hall. I said, give me that. I took the catheter from her. I said, if this guy gets an erection, you're going to lose your damn eye. <laughs> and so I go in. I take, oh, I come out of the hall. And the, the uh, nurse is just laying back in the chair. And he is laughing his ass off. He goes, uh, What'd you do? I said, I went and I took the catheter I started it for. I go, why'd you do that? I said, God damn, man. He goes, but it was funny. I'm like, yeah, it was funny, but no. <laughs> She's about to give him a happy ending. Oh, my God. <laughs> Good Lord. When I, uh, when I worked in the jail, we were doing med pass one night. And uh, this is back in the segregation unit. We passed meds through the chuck holes. And we had this old crusty old nurse and she'd retired from the federal medical center and come to work from, uh, for us. And she sounded like one of Marge Simpson's sisters. She's like, <laughs> how are you doing tonight? Corporal Roberts, you know, had smoked way too much in her career. Well, I, I go to, I go pop a, pop a chuck hole so she can give meds to this one guy. And he reaches out and flops it out on the chuck hole. And, <laughs> and the, uh, you know, it's like, it's like a baby's arm holding an apple anyway. It was just out on, out onto the, uh, out of the chuck hole and she looks at it looks at me looks back at it and rears back and kicks the chuck hole shut wow. and i look i look through the window and the guy is but gets the back wall of the cell with his eyes oh. about this wide i'm like that'll oh. teach you and she looked at me and goes he refused and walked off oh. <laughs> all the way to the back wall huh <laughs> he dove away from that door <laughs> i did nessie <laughs> All right, please tell me this conversation was just as raunchy before I got up. Well, it was pretty nope. bad. It was, yeah, it got worse, but it wasn't quite, it wasn't too bad. <laughs> the sad thing is, Doug, is as soon as you said we had a pass match through the chuckle, I almost said so did Naoma. <laughs> After the story she told earlier. And then I realized what a chuckle was. It wasn't very funny. <laughs> <laughs> Man, <laughs> we lose <I> Carrie. <laughs> He'll be right back. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, Patrick, you're gonna have a hard time explaining what's going on to him when he comes back. Uh, oh, Lord have mercy. <laughs> oh wow. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's all right. Uh. Yeah, no, Steve, you uh, have definitely opened my eyes to a lot of weird things <laughs> from your perspective, uh, from your career. So <laughs> I will thank you for that. Speaking, I would just, what? speaking of weird things, I've been getting some really frantic texts from, from Thomas here lately. Why don't you tell that story, man? Oh, God. Over like the last week, it's, he's had some weird crap last, going on down there in Hammond. Last couple of weeks, yeah. All right, I uh, I was going to try to remain anonymous on that one, but it's okay. I'm called out now. Um, Sorry. So, the last couple of weeks, I've been having like really late nights where I've been coming home like eleven thirty, midnight, that that kind of area. So the first incident happens. This is multiple incidents. So the first incident happens, and I'm driving home. I have my windows down and not listening to music, just trying to be done with the day, right? Because I'm tired. And um, I'm driving down, and it's it's pretty dark where I am. There's tree line, and it's just like a two-lane road, you know, one lane for each direction of traffic. Ditches off the edge of the road, and then thick tree line, swamp, gross area. Don't want to go in there. Um so I'm going down one of the darkest patches and um, my, my headlights find a dog laying down in the middle of the road. And the dog was dead, but it didn't look dead. Like it, it, it looked dead because it wasn't like getting up and moving, but it wasn't like bent out of shape or blood okay. spatter or anything like that. It was just laying there dead. 
Um, so I, I, I slowed down because I see a car coming in off in the distance. So I was just going to wait for him to pass. And then I was going to go around the dog and, you know, do that. Well, I, I don't know if it was just from reading DA's books or what, but all of a sudden, like I had been stopped there for a second and literally all the wildlife, bugs, frogs, birds, everything shut up completely quiet. And like I said, I don't know if it's from reading DA's books or what, but I freaked out and I said, fuck this dog. I'm going over this dog and I'm getting the F out. Right. So then I, I think nothing of it. You know, Fuck I this go dog. I was, I was pissed <laughs> off. <laughs> <laughs> and, yeah, exactly. I was like, you know, I'm in I'm in a RAV4. You know, it's, I'm I'm not in a little like low rider Honda Civic or nothing like that. Not gonna uh, high center on a Chihuahua. Yes. So um, <laughs> So I was like, I was thinking uh, the whole the whole night. I was like, holy shit, that was weird. But you know, maybe it's just my nerves getting to me. Maybe I was just tired. Whatever. Maybe either the next night or two nights later, I'm going back down. It's another late night, and the same thing. Oh wait, I didn't even. T- so next morning, dog is completely gone, and this is like six a.m. So you're not you're not seeing like street sweeping or anything like that. There's nothing like that on that kind of a road. And I'm assuming rain washed away the blood, but dog completely gone off the road, nowhere to be seen, not in the ditch, gone. So that creeped me out a little bit. About a night, one or two nights later, I forgot which, but I'm on my way home again and another dog in the middle of the road, in my lane, chilling there. Same this spot. Time, same exact spot. And... Now, was this one dead too, or just? If it wasn't dead before, it was dead after I ate it. Because it was laying in the same damn spot. And it was in the same spot. Oh, get carry. <laughs> exactly. Well, it gets better. So, again, next morning, same thing. Dog's gone, no blood, no nothing. So, the next time I'm going home late, I think it might have been like a few days after that, or a week after that, or I don't remember how long. It's all a blur to me. Um, I was like, fuck this. It's a late night. I'm not going the same way. I'm going around. So I drive about an extra 10, 15 minutes around and I have to go through more swampy, woody type areas to get home. But I figure it's a different dark, woody type area. So I should be okay. And, um, I'm driving down the opposite way and there is... A branch on my side of the road. And the the branch is like thicker than a baseball bat, but there's like a lot of little branches and and like leaves and shit. Like somebody dragged it and put it there. And, you know, it wasn't like high torrential winds for something that big to be like knocked off and, and sitting there. So, you know, I'm I'm like, what the hell is that? You know, that's weird. And I see a, a car coming towards me and the headlights. And I look over to the side of the trees because I'm already freaking out. And uh, I see I shine, which is about like eye level to where I'm sitting in my rat in my rav four. But the ditch goes down like a, like a couple feet. And then there's like big trees. Right. So I see I shine and I'm like, holy shit, there's I shine in that tree over there. And I freak out. And then the next thing I know, the tree is moving backwards. And more trees are coming around it. So it wasn't a tree. That's just what my brain recognized. It was just something giant that was standing there seeing if this was the opportunity to strike. And you could see like you could see like branches and trees coming in front of it as it backed up into the woods, like into the tree area. And I drove over that branch like I did the dog. (laughs) (laughs) That's not terrifying at all. No. (laughs) That's that's perfectly normal. Yeah. (laughs) Nothing to see. Move along, folks. (laughs) Yeah, no. I and I I I, to this day I still think I mean this wasn't too long ago, but to this day, you know, I'm thinking that, you know, that other car probably saved my life. 
you yeah. know, because if, if if that was the opportunity and that car distracted it for, you know, long enough, you know, then fuck that. Or if you hadn't have seen it and there hadn't been another car and you got out to move the branch. Yep. Yeah, it sounded like you were being stalked. Missing yeah. 411 time. Now, this this actually goes back further before all this happened. It was a, like, like a couple weeks before that where I messaged mm-hmm. you. Where Is I was this where you tell us you were cursed by a gypsy? No, no, no. no. Oh. I, was, I got detoured down this godforsaken path because part of the freeway was shut down. And they said, you have to go this route and this and that and the other. So, you know, you're driving through podunk areas that nobody should be driving through. And um, I was stopped at a stop sign and I saw this dude standing like off the side of the road and he was just looking at me like weird. Right. And when he saw me, like, and I saw him and he saw me and then he kind of did this weird head tilt where he was just like, right. And to me, that reminded me of a dog, like initially. And I was like, well, fuck that. That's weird. And, you know, next thing you know, um, another car comes down to the same intersection, but they're going the, the, the other way. And, you know, they're, they take off that way. So I'm, I'm following the car, like making sure I'm clear to go. And I look back up, the guy's totally gone. And there's just a big old mongrel type dog walking across the street. Dude. And I'm like, uh-huh. I fucking hate Louisiana. That sounds like a <laughs> Rougarou. All right. So, Lou, Lou Guru? Rougarou, Lou Guru, who's a who? <laughs> I don't care. Yeah. As long as it don't mess with me. So, DA was telling me, you know, put some put some pennies by the door because we heard that there was like an aversion to copper. You know, I was reading up. I was like, I'm going to buy some, I'm going to put some pennies on the door. I heard they don't like, they don't count past the number 12. So, you have to have like 13 items out in front of your door. And I'm like, I live in an Asian household. We've got more shoes than that outside. We're fine. Um, but I was like, I'm going to go buy some holy water. I'm going to go buy one of those like good luck cats that just do this at the restaurant. I can, I, I can just picture this werewolf going 10, 11, 12. Fuck. Wait. One, <laughs> two, three. Son of a bitch. <laughs> well, apparently I was reading into the lore and apparently it's because they're so concerned with midnight um, and and oh. the phases of the moon and everything else like that, that they, they don't count past 12 for some reason. And they get confused trying to count past 12 or midnight, whatever it is. And um, they end up taking off before before sunrise. Hmm. So they're stuck at your door trying to count or until they get frustrated and leave. That's like an old vampire lore where if you throw mustard seed down, the vampire have to count the mustard seed because they're like they're like seriously OCD. Yes, I've heard of that, too. But then there was another they movie. Have to mustard seed. And they're so tiny before they can come come get you. Yes. But I saw this other movie where uh, the guy threw – it was rice or something like that where he threw rice on the floor. And then next thing you know, the vampire is like right up in his face. And he's like, I thought you had to count it. And he says, what do you think? I'm a vampire. It's all in a jar. There's 5 million, 500 and whatever. <laughs> up yeah. In the jar. yeah. Super speed. Yeah. Yeah. Rain Man vampire. Yeah, he's a rain yeah. Man. I, was, I was thinking of Rain Man and the Matchsticks. Yeah. Oh god, that was great. Kmart. Yeah, uh, Kmart sucks. Yeah, blood's good. I'm an excellent driver. Excellent Judge, driver. Judge Wapner's son. Judge Wapner's son. Uh oh. F A R T. Uh oh. Uh oh. This dude. Apparently, here. that wasn't in the script. That whole fart scene wasn't in the script. That was just Dustin Hoffman. Yeah, that was just Dustin Hoffman ad libbing. Now well, this. Uh, here, this dude here had a freaking skinwalker episode. Oh, Ooh. shit. Tell us about it. So, talk about it. I mean, it, it's, it's been some time ago. I, I uh, did some work on the uh, Navajo Res medical work. And uh, one of my hard, fast rules was to, I told myself never to drive at night on the, uh, on the res. But if I can remember correctly, I was at his house and we had gotten a, uh, Severely drunk the night before, so I couldn't leave too early in the morning. And uh, it's why I found myself driving back. And I just, I mean, I'm real skeptical about all this stuff. I mean, because all cultures have their uh, their stories of witches and, and whatnot. But mm-hmm. um, the whatnot's what's going to get you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and I thought, and I and I thought I noticed something out of the uh, out of the corner of my eye, and I 
looked over and I, you know, and I just, I didn't want it to look too long because I'm driving at night. It's on the, it's on the res. There's no lights. You want to stay on the road. And, uh, what, what can I say? I don't know, man. Was it some, maybe a glow from the eyes that I saw something that I couldn't recognize about what was trying to, what was keeping up with me as I'm going down the highway. And later on it happened again, but what I didn't do was panic. I mean, everything I've ever done in my life has taught me don't panic. It never helps anything. And I mean, what, no, I don't know. It's not a real exciting story. I just, uh, I just kept on going until I got back to where I was staying out by the hospital and uh, started sleeping with the Springfield 1911 up under my pillow. Yeah. I can't say that I blame you. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Same as pacing you in a and, vehicle? And then, but a few days before that, somebody, I've been talking to one of the, uh, one of the natives that, and normally they, they don't really talk about this, but started, he started telling me about, I don't remember how we got into the conversation, but he started telling me about skinwalkers. Um, about uh, just some of the history uh, of it. And, um, you know, and then this pops up several days later. And Maybe uh, he's the one that saw you. Yeah. Wow. Who knows, man? All I know is I just didn't feel, I don't, you know, you know, who was it? Was it all in my head? But not too long after, I didn't feel safe. And yeah. I just, uh, and I actually left. Yeah, so. and it was like the from what he had told me, and he's leaving a lot out. But when he told me he was driving, and he was passing by this guy, he saw a dude walking on the side of the road, and his headlights hit the guy, and the guy turned around, and he saw like a yellow glint off of the dude's eyes. We don't have that as human beings, you know. We we don't have that tap of them, loose of them, that like like a, a freaking wolf or a coyote has, and. And he's wait, like, wait, what did you call it? I'm sorry. Tapidum lucidum. It's a reflective, it's a reflective panel on the back here of the it's retina. It's a film, right? That gives them, say again? It's a film. It's like a yeah. film. It's like a, it's like a photorefractive film on the back of the retina that gives them night vision, right? And so he's like, he saw that and he called me like when it happened, he's like, I kept driving and like a few miles up the road, he saw the same freaking dude on the side of the road that turned around and looked at him and he did the same thing. I was like, what'd you do? He's like, I drove faster. Yeah. Got the police, <laughs> the barricaded my door and freaking locked and loaded, you know, yeah. make, my, make sure my crap was like ready. But that was one reason I went, I said, dude, you need to tell everybody about this because this, this translates into exactly the same stuff that DA is talking about in his book. Exactly. You know, and I was like, dude, the skinwalker, if you even mention a skinwalker, what do they do? They tell you not to. Yeah. yeah. They clam up. Yeah, they don't want to talk about it normally. Yeah, because they say they even mentioning the name of one can give it power. Right. Yeah. And draw its attention to you. Absolutely. Yeah. It's not a word you want to use. Yeah. So he was like back at this house on the res, you know, like locked and loaded, like ready for whatever to, to come through. So... That was his his like literal, you know, first first person encounter with it, and he's like, "Dude, he said, had I had a dash cam or something like that, it would have made it would have it would have lent lent you know it would lend some credo to credence to his his issue you know his issue whatever happened, but the thing is that happened to him and he's he's super reliable. I mean, honestly, Patrick is." He's super skeptical about this shit, but when he came out to it, he was like, "Bro, this is like something that the that the old dudes were talking about, and they don't mention this on the res at all, at all." Yeah, that's that's a little creepy, man. Um, yeah, put it lightly. <laughs> yeah, more than a little. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. To put it lightly, that's just that's fucking hor horrifying. Um, well, that's probably. I'm sure that's why I left not too long after that. Yeah. So. He was like, yeah, I'm kind of done with this place after that. He, I called him. He's like, what's up? And he told me about it. He's like, yeah, I'm kind of done with this place. I'm, Gee, would you look at the time? Yeah. Look, uh, it, dude, look, I, I was thinking the same it, damn thing. I was like, I'm thinking, like, I, I don't know if I'm that attached to Louisiana. Yeah. You know? Yeah. It's kind of it's kind of like, uh, screw this shit the clock. So I'm out of here. <laughs> you know? Yeah. You know, uh, 
You know, Thomas, no, I, I know you're not a gun guy, but maybe you will be a gun a gun guy after I, this. You yeah. know what? Um, I, that I was already contemplating, but I, that has already been crossing my mind more than once in this last week. I'll yeah. tell you that. I was like, I'm going to have to take some classes and make something happen quick because I do not want – there is not a dog safe from me right now. <laughs> You don't need any classes. Just Joe Biden says you just got a racket shotgun, man. They were, they were well, Louisiana is an open carry, but I yeah. mean, I'm not. I'm not concerned about. I'm not concerned about that because I mean, my my Rav Four can pack a lot of damage to a dog. But <laughs> I, yeah. as long as I can keep moving, I don't care. It's like that dog wasn't dead. It didn't run fast enough. <laughs> yep, that uh, that four wheel drive. Uh, button there that's the fuck you button you know? yeah 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 when he told me about that i was like what yeah he was driving a what are you driving a dodge then yeah three quarter time a big yeah, dodge this diesel i was like dude just just run over it whatever fuck that i got a one ton now <laughs> <laughs> with a brush guard yeah with a brush guard. general yeah you know, but stuff like that is is what I think leads people to to. I mean, people have these encounters firsthand. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. And I, I wouldn't have told anybody about it, but you guys about this because nobody would fucking believe me about this shit. Hmm. And they'd be like, "Oh, you were scared of a dog? Uh huh. Sure." A dead dog. You know, I'm like a uh, like Patrick and and, uh, and Thomas of the whole thing. Yeah, I'm I'm kind of the skeptic. I, I was I, I always refer to myself as a cryptid agnostic. You know, I would love to, to I don't say encounter because I sure as fuck don't want that. But I, I would, I would like to have firsthand knowledge of these things uh, because I really want to believe. But it's got to be some pretty hard scientific evidence. You know, uh, with, See, with you say you, you won't live vicariously through others. Is that what you're saying? Basically, yeah, I want one of one of you all or somebody else that I trust to. Have some firsthand knowledge that they've documented well. Um, you know, I, uh, you know, I, I mean, I. Well, well, just just one moment here. What 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 about that? I mean, oh, I'm, that, that, uh, that qualifies as firsthand. That, yeah, and and uh, the DA realizes the next time mm -hmm. he uh, asks me to go, Steve, go, go trust your bait and lure. Yeah, you know, uh, the next time DA says, I want to go take pictures of this such and such, you'd be like, well, that's a fuck you, and uh, bring you back pictures. That's a four -wheel I'll see you when you get back. Yeah. I'll see you when you get what, back. What if, gets, if you so, get back. What gets me about that whole incident is it'd be one thing if it was stationary. The fact that you can see it move behind the tree on, on video is the part that gets me more than anything. It's right. nuts. And, Gary, did I tell you that story? What was that? That you that green? I thought that was an ink block. Oh, I'll go through. I'll go through a couple of them as you explain it, DA. Okay. Um, about um, a year and a half Look ago. Look for the hand. Yeah, yeah. About a year and a half ago, Steve and I went down to an abandoned campground here in Missouri, down by Kimberling City, um, to shoot a promo video for Lakeview Man. And our whole goal was just to go down. To, and the, the Army Corps of Engineers shut this park down 20-some years ago over some disappearances in the park. Uh, yeah, it was, it's it's closed to the public. You're, you're not really yeah. supposed to really go back in there. But, of course, I did. Uh, and because one of the scenes from Lakeview Man was going to take place in this park. So I'm, we were getting ready. Steve and his wife and me and my wife, we were getting ready to go out to dinner. I'm like, hey, you want to run down to the old Joe Bald campground, shoot a promo video for the book? And he's like, hell yeah. So I you know, I was a deputy at the time, so I had a pistol on. And Steve's a concealed carrier. He had his pistol on. So we just bipped on down there. And and we were just going to shoot a little couple-minute video, me talking about locations for the books. Well, at the time, we didn't see anything. We didn't notice anything. We didn't even hear anything. Um, and we All shot the, the video. All the were normal. Yeah, the noises were normal. We didn't feel creeped out. And you know, being a cop, you'd think I would notice crap like this, but I didn't notice anything. And a deer hunter, too. I grew up deer hunting. I didn't notice anything weird going on. Uh, so after we shot the video, we hopped in the van, and we went on into Branson, and we ate dinner and went on about our night. Um, 
flash forward, I go to upload it to YouTube and I watch the video as it's uploading to YouTube. And I'm like noticing quite a bit of eye shine in the background. And this is Missouri. I mean, there are plenty of animals out in the woods that cast eye shine. It could have been, you know, I'm thinking, you know, it's probably just a raccoon or, you know, an owl up a tree or something. You know, I'm not, I'm not thinking anything weird. Um, so I upload it to my YouTube channel and it sets on my YouTube channel as a promo video for the better part of a year with nothing, you know, other, other than people watching it on my YouTube channel and, and us just referring back to it once in a while as a promo video for the books. Well, on one episode of the nightmare hunter with Roger, um, Roger and I get to talking about it because we were talking about Lakeview man. And he goes, you want to just show the video? I go, yeah, sure. So we move the video over and we're showing the video on, on the nightmare hunter, just playing the two minute video. And Thomas here said, Hey, I saw something move behind that tree. And I'm like, yeah, bullshit. No, you didn't. He's like, yeah, something's moving behind that tree. So we slowed it down and went back to the frames he was talking about. And I'm like, I don't know. I still think I were bifocals. I, I like, I still don't really see much back there. He's like, I'm telling you, there's something back there. Well, Josh and Adam um, do a lot of work with video and, and, and computers. Uh, so they, they took the video and they, they, they cut out the sections where the movement was and started, started enhancing the images and, and, and bringing in the, the, uh, the areas into focus. And at first what they sent me was this. And I'm like, okay, there's a, there's a blob. Yeah, it's a smudge. It's hey. a smudge. And yeah. you can tell from one image to the next that it does change positions. And I'm like, well, I still don't really see it. And that's when we got this one showing it where it was partially obscured by the tree. And then the next frame, there it is sticking out. You can see right there, just, just left of center, what looks very much like the head of a wolf. Uh, having gone back out there in the daylight to that exact tree, we know that spot is about eight and a half feet off the ground. Wow. Holy this shit. video, you can actually see its hand. Seriously, dude? Yeah. 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 There's a hand in the bottom of the, of the red circle. Yep. Yeah. yeah. There's a there's a better image in there that shows the hand a little bit better. I think it's this one. Yeah. It yeah. doesn't show the face as well. A no, lot of this... Like it was ducking back, but the hand was still there. Yeah. A lot of it we had to... It basically do an artificial night vision with a you know turning up a lot of the the shadows and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, at first me and Adam were like, nah, there's just like a tree or some shrub back there, and then that stuff started coming out, and we're like, uh, da. I'll um, show you the the no. slowed down video. That's just the section of the <laughs> no. video. I'm not gonna play the whole video. Mm -hmm. I'll play the slowed yeah. down version. Uh, where I am filming this with an iPhone yeah, camera. Yeah, he filmed that with an iPhone. Still. I'm standing before, still. I am not moving. I'm just spinning the camera. Before you play it, I want to give a reference. This is the you kind of see it poking out behind the tree right there. If you look real close in the circle, there's kind of a triangle shadow behind the tree. That's the tree that you're going to be looking for, and you'll right. see you'll see that little triangle duck behind the tree. Ready? Yep. Yeah. Take the picture down or it stays up. Oh. All right. Here we go. I don't know if you saw during the slow mo. It, you yeah. could see the little bit of a triangled face, and it just kind of whoop, right behind that tree. It's like something was there, and it was looking at y'all. It went concealed back behind the tree when it saw y'all painted yeah. back. Mm -hmm. away. Well, you got to you got to tell how uh, Steve got his nickname Sweet Pea. <laughs> yeah, because before we even filmed the video, Steve had went out almost to that tree and peed in the woods. Yeah, I'm, I'm a just right before we shot the video. I mean, where else no, are you supposed to be? Well, well yeah, I, I and see, that's the, the thing. Woods. You don't, 
you don't expect to go take a piss and find a dogman. I mean, that's that you can't be blamed for that. We had uh, Nick Valente of the North American Dogman Project on, uh, and he's something of a, of an expert on dogman sightings. And he watched that video and looked at the pictures and said it's one of the best examples of a Type Three dogman he's ever seen captured on film. Nice. I mean, yeah. I mean dude, there's so much. People like well, I've never seen it. You know, so I don't believe in him. Like, but do you believe in in God or Jesus? But you've never seen him. Yeah, I mean, I grew up. Well, I grew up Southern Baptist preacher's kid, so I, I can give you, you know, the what for on that. But it, hey, it, things wrong, dude. You've never seen it. I will tell you, I am all about the book where the sky wizard sends a zombie carpenter to save us all from the apple curse. You know, but, but does that mean well, it doesn't? Mean that? But see, D A and I were sharing stuff the other day. Remember, just the random animals that were being found. There's there's things that we are constantly discovering today. There's no reason to believe that these creatures haven't been around for thousands of years and learned to adapt to avoid us. Yeah. yeah. Well, well, hey, Carrie, here's well, a, here's a good one. Oh, that that uh that that campground, the Joe Bald Campground, has been abandoned for over twenty years. Um. About ten miles away, well, by road, but by lake, it's much closer. There is another campground that the Army Corps of Engineers shut down that they bulldozed the entrance to, and you, you can't even get back in it. I'm dying to get back in there. So when I come out there, do you want to uh, do you want to do some exploration? You bet your ass I do. I'm, I'm going to rent a boat. I am. Now you can I, get in there with a four wheel drive. One hundred percent down with that, brother. Because I'll be yeah. driving up there for that. Well, what's so fun about this whole thing, or uh, fun in a creepy sort of way, is when we had Nick Valente on there. So you know, he's arguably probably the closest thing to an expert on dogman behavior that you're going to find in North America. Uh, he goes, you pissed in the woods? I'm like, yeah, I'm a type 1 diabetic, and I'm 45 years old. Of course I pissed in the fucking woods. And he goes, you know, that's a direct challenge to a dogman. It's like marking your territory. I'm like, oh, wonderful. Wonderful. And when he when he watched the rest of the video, he watched the full video and marked the spots of the eye shine. He said, "I would estimate there were at least five around you, and you guys were being stalked." I'm like, "Well, it's probably a good thing we got our asses back in the van and got out of there." <laughs> right on. You know, uh, the the night of the, uh, the the con, like that Friday night or Saturday night, we need to make a trip to just like the the core group. You can't take a whole bunch oh. of people out there. Oh but yeah, yeah. yeah. Take a run yeah, down to Joe Ball. Not only that, but you, we need to like have a section where we play that video. Oh yeah, and and show the pictures and stuff like this, and you know, put it up on the big screen for a oh, uh, yeah. for a panel. Oh yeah, we'll we'll have a, a better version of the video with some more call outs and yeah, you know, yeah, we're we're, we're still working on cleaning that up for a for a new uh, full video to go on the on the YouTube channel. Oh, I thought you were holding oh. up a joint for a second. Well, no, and. Uh, I mean, I'm in Colorado, but yeah. <laughs> what, what, what do we have? What do we have, Carrie? That's that's some serious pew pew. That's a uh, a uh, Glock 40 MOS with a 220 grain uh, Underwood ammo doing 1325 out of a seven inch barrel. That'll get someone's oh, attention. That's what you uh, that's what you take to go quail hunting, right? Yeah, that's what I go when I go up the mountains in Colorado. I got that with me with a 20 round mag. You know, that's the thing about Colorado. There's a lot of Wendigo sightings. With that, you ain't, you ain't having nothing but feathers. Yeah, that's when you want to make pillows. Dude, dude it's a it's like a 41 Magnum. Uh, and and my daughter went up to this to this uh, Bible camp at our at our Orthodox Christian church, Orthodox church up in uh up in, up in the mountains and she was like dad they were talking about wendigos up here i was like uh yeah that is a real thing and she's like what's a wendigo and i told her and she was like that's <laughs> terrifying i'm not going in the woods at all oh, uh, if you find yourself in the woods video. of colorado or any part of the northern u.s like up up in the, the uh in uh like minnesota wisconsin or into canada and you hear your name called, yeah. get the f out of there. 
Yeah, dude, I hey, got a, I got hey. a, yeah, that TikTok <laughs> video you showed me, DA. That thing was terrifying. If dude. you're anywhere other than with people who know hey. your name and you hear your name, you get the fuck out of yeah. there. <laughs> yeah, I agree. I, I carry that and a 458 SOCOM up in the hills <laughs> when I go. I, I got to get me a 458 SOCOM. It, hey, in a, I had my name called once, but I mean, it, it was definitely not a Wendigo situation. I was in an empty house. Might have been paranormal. Oh, yeah. I'm sure it probably was. but That's probably like grandma no. calling. Hey, uh, hey, hey, Carrie, when you do come out, guess what's about 35 minutes from my from my house? What's that? Black Rain Ordinance. Oh, dude. Yeah. We got to go visit. I'm assuming that's some sort of ammunition or gun shop. It's a gun company. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> yeah Black Rain is within driving distance of my house. And, I was going to say, the way both of your faces lit up when you said that. I was like, I'm just pretty sure that's some sort of gun or ammunition yeah. company. In, in uh, about a month, I'll be I'll be down there, DA. That's our camping trip in about a month. Nice. Right up there in in the forest where Apex Predator took place. Like <laughs> min, minutes minutes away. <laughs> nice. I have to come awesome. up and tell you guys some campfire stories. Hell yeah. No. My mom was wondering but if you, you got to make grandpa's coffee. <laughs> that's that's yeah. easy enough to do. My mom's yeah. asked me like four times if you were going to come up because there's a big fire pit around some of the smaller cabins. What days are you going to be up? Uh, let me pull up my calendar. Yeah. Is that where you keep your calendar? Yeah, yeah, Josh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Just, just think, just think when Wendigo gets made into audio books with Carrie. <laughs> I just thought of that. Hey. Well, don't worry, don't worry, Carrie. The guy that's going to be doing the Codename Wild Hunt books uh, has a Georgia accent already, so you're you're good to go. There you go, there you go. Now, like where Johnny just goes uh, mountain climbing up in what, North Georgia, North, or North Alabama, well, the Tag area, Tennessee, Alabama, Georgia. Yeah, yeah. Up, up near uh, near Dahlonega, and there was all kinds of freaking cryptid sightings up there too. So. Weird stuff. Oh my god, I'm already terrified to go down the street from my house. You're talking about going into the deep woods. Hey, there's I'm gonna get a coffee refill real quick. That's delivering. That's deliverance woods up there, man. Yeah. And the men are many, and the sheep run scared. Yeah. If you hear if you hear banjo music, just run. I look oh, a little. Lord. I look a little too much like Ned Beatty to hang around for that. <laughs> Hey, D.A., was it Joe Bald you were talking about that had the cop car get smashed down? Yep. Uh, this happened back to about 2005 or six. Uh, there was a Stone County deputy that was drove in, down to the old Joe Bald campground and backed into one of the old camp uh, campsites to just sit where nobody could see him and do his paperwork and dick around till he got a call. And something come up behind his car and slammed its hands down on, on, on the, the deck of his trunk and caved the trunk in. Holy shit, dude. Did that actually see? happened? That actually happened. He oh punched the accelerator God. and shot out of the park and wouldn't go back. Actually dude. quit being a deputy about a week later. Refused dude. to go back in there. Was, I thought that was just good. No, that happened. PA. That happened. Dude. I, that, there, there'd be like a serious cleaning out of the pants on that. <laughs> good thing I was wearing my brown pants. Team? Yeah, good thing I was wearing yeah. brown pants. Holy shit, Max, bro. That's insane. Like, yeah, I need to clean I, up on aisle me. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I I put those dates in the the private chat for you. Oh, okay. But uh, I oh, guys, I see the dates. I think I'm gonna have to bail off here. I'm getting hungry, and I got some other stuff I got to work on for All Tower Media. So, well, Josh, work, I was look, looking at those dates. I will be around for those, so I will definitely try to be up there for your campground. Uh, the last week in July. Uh, I will be going with uh, the guys from the North American Dogman Project, right. the LBL. Nice. Uh, I don't know if you guys are familiar with the uh, the stories about the of the beast of LBL, but that's where we're going. LBL, where is that? Land between oh. the lakes. It's right on the Tennessee Kentucky border. Josh, have a good night, buddy. Thanks for yep. joining yep. us. Have a good night, guys. All right, man. And then there were six. Go get some food. Go get some food, man. Y'all can tell Care to quit telling me what to do. Bring me a storage shit. black, bitch. He, he, he nothing but five foot tall. Reach over and just slap the piss out of him. 
Well, right. He gets mad at that, man. I'm half Japanese and like seven inches taller. Put him in your cargo pocket and carry him off. Hey, he, that'd probably he, be the he, last he, thing he touched. He can the board. some rice, though. Let me tell you what. <laughs> Don't go talking to me about rice. I know rice. I, I do. My my dad married my mom. She was from Picayune. They're down near Slidell, Louisiana. He's like, I've never eat, eaten so much rice in my life. <laughs> Everything has rice in it. I tripped mom- out my wife's family because I grew up in, like, I mean, I'm Hispanic, but my uh, we ate a lot of uh, Caucasian food. And I had eaten my rice with butter growing up. Um, yeah. And I ate it in front of my wife and, and stepkids like that. And they were like, what the hell are you doing? Why it's are you good, eating, putting butter in your rice? And I was like, it you- tastes good like that. I like it like butter that. Butter and a little cinnamon and sugar. Oh, and, my God. And I, I always put a little oh. milk in mine, too. Oh, yeah. Dude. It's a, yeah. It, that, it becomes a porridge at that point. You know, oh, and yeah, you might appreciate this. We it was actually breakfast. watching the show. Oh, awesome! Hey, is, is yep. that Miles yep. Led better fixing you some food? <laughs> yep. yep, Andrew and my that? nephew are watching, so awesome. Uh, now that we know everybody's watching, everybody stay quiet. <laughs> oh, funny. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Andrew, we can see, see you. you. Sell lead better? Are you talking Jerry Clower of the Yazoo City plant? Uncle Percy lead better? <laughs> yes, that's right. Yes, sir. Knock yes, him sir. out, John. Knock him out, John. Knock him out, John. Knock him out, John. Oh my God, that that put me in wayback machine right there, man. Yeah, you know, that's a that's a fact. <laughs> Well, Carrie, if you're uh, if you're dry, traveling and you don't have any books on audio to listen to, go over to the Dixie Cryptid podcast. Uh, Cam uh, Cam uh, God dang it. Buckner Cam Buckner. I it just completely slipped, slipped my mind his last name. Cam Buckner and Naoma run that cha- run that that uh, channel, okay. and they uh, they do narrations of of cryptid encounters and they do actual stories that people have sent in, and you can find some amazing stories on there. Some of them some of them are, are fiction, but a lot of them are just like viewer accounts right. of things they've they've run across in the woods, and some well, are pretty terrifying. It's called what Dixie what Dixie Cryptids. All right, all right, yeah. Because I'm right, you next month, so that'll give me another another good chance to listen uh, you, to the podcast. You could drive for weeks and not run out of shows to listen right. to on there. He's got a lot of them. Yeah, and he's Solid. he's a really amazing narrator too. Mm-hmm. Oh, he's I, got that. I love he's got that that uh, that Georgia drawl. He's going to be doing the narrations oh. for the Codename Wild Hunt books. He has the prologue up for the first one. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What I really enjoyed that. that. What's this draw <laughs> you're talking about? I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah. <laughs> it, it's just the way y'all talk. That, that, just, well, that wasn't even good, man. That was like, <laughs> no, no, just, yeah. I am too Steve. stimulus white boy, guys. Damn it. Or, Steve, are you, are, you just, are you just jealous because you're getting pimps for 22 hillbillies? <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> well, it's funny. You know, I was born in St. Louis, and... Uh, so, you know, my, my native accent, you know, has that that kind of a uh, – you can always tell somebody from St. Louis when you hear them say the letters O-R together because it's never pronounced or. It's always R. And so, you know, like to drive from St. Louis down here to Springfield, you've got to take Highway 44. And, uh, well, I live in Springfield now. Yeah, 44. So, 44. I've now lived in Springfield 27 years, and so I've got this weird little bastard accent that, you know, if I get drunk enough, it sounds a little more Southern, uh, but if I go back and visit my family, I sound like that. And, uh, yeah. I said, I said, I said, boy. I said, I said, boy. I'll just tell you, when I first... You ain't had enough damn whiskey yet. Yeah. yeah. I'll tell you, when, when I first came to Louisiana... Wash. What's that? Do you say wash or do you say wash? Me personally, I say yeah. wash, but I grew up saying wash. All right, and uh, and it may be uh, to this clean your face. Right so here says I'm gonna, gonna bury them. Yep, bury. 
the the piece of fabric yeah. that I would uh, clean my face with is a wash rag. Yeah, he, and he says, uh, wash cloth. Yeah, I'm gonna iron some clothes. I'm like, you mean iron? Iron. Yeah. Iron. Yeah, iron. iron some clothes. And iron. you think he's saying it wrong? Yeah. Or, <laughs> or, iron. Or, okay. Do y'all do y'all do y'all change your oil or do you change your oil? Oil. Uh, oil. 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 Oh, yeah. Oil originally. Yeah. Yeah. I cook with oil. oil. I need to get a quart of oil. <laughs> oh, yeah. wow. Go get a quart of oil. There you go. Are we gonna, I, you I know, got the biggest. Oil, some the peanut. Biggest, uh, people making fun of me when I first moved to Louisiana. Uh, because I was asking people, you know, where where is the best way to catch? Like, I was staying at a hotel with my wife, and I was asking the people at the front, like, where's, where's the best place to catch the 10? And they're like, 10 what what are you talking about I was like, the 10 the 10 you know the the freeway like you mean the interstate yeah. that's, <laughs> that's, that's, that's that's a total west coast thing is the whatever the five or the 10 like i i was around here it's it. the highway yeah, yeah exactly you mean you need to how to, i get out on the interstate you mean yeah. you need I ten? I was like, you mean uh, Interstate twenty five? Yeah. yeah, the twenty five. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah no. Interstate like, you need ten. What? I was like, no. I. Uh, what are you trying to catch? Fish? Like, so, uh, okay. Speaking of interstates, folks, I have a mystery that I've been trying to figure out. I want to know how come the state of Oklahoma has the most goddamn toll roads I've ever been on and the worst highways at the same time. <laughs> Don't go to Texas. Uh, Fact. Don't go to Texas. Yes. It's not a nickel of that money goes into fixing them roads. I told a I told a class at, at, at the Miami. Miami. Yeah. Spelled Miami. Pronounced Miami. Miami. Mm -hmm. I taught a class to Miami tribe a couple of years ago, and they're like, they're, I was like, dude, your roads are absolute dog shit. But I, hey, here's some free passes from movie theater. In our in our casinos, but whatever. But I was like, like, how am I supposed to get there? Yeah, I can't get there because there's like nine million potholes in the way. Or you're driving down the inter the interstate interstate in Oklahoma, and there's so many ruts in the highway, you feel your vehicle shift as you drive. Absolutely, don't take your hands off the wheel. And count Hell no, man. When I first came to Louisiana, I lost so many tires. Due to potholes, yes. due to screws, due to yes. all sorts of random shit in the road. And yes. there's a saying, they say on, in you know the rest of the country, they drive on the right side of the road. In Louisiana, we drive on what's left. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's a fact. Okay. I know this is a great but Y'all need to drive in uh, Barrow, Alaska during the summer. God. No, thank you. Yeah. Oh, sure has fun. There's the sure. summer in Barrow, Alaska. The best, the best time to drive in Barrow is during the winter because it's all filled in with ice and it's <laughs> in the summertime. It literally it'll swallow up your whole car when, jeez, when the holes open. That, up. That's not a pothole; it's a tank trap. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, I know. a water-filled fighting position. Oh, so DA, something was crossing my mind as I was driving home today. Um, are dog. when are we going? Yeah. Pretty much, um, something like that. Are we ever going to get a book or a uh, series of books about zombie Sasquatches? I thought about that. I haven't done it yet, <sighs> but you got to remember, I'm currently writing cryptid books, and at some point, it transitions to zombies. So. I, that's why I was thinking it because I was thinking about Ragnarok. At some point, there might be some overlap. I have, I have read, uh, I have read the first one. I'm trying to get to the Crucible. And um, I, I'm going to start on that as soon as I uh, squirrel away a little bit more money. And I, because I'm going to be buying, I have to, I, I told myself, I'm just going to wait until I can buy all nine books because I get sick of finishing the first one and having to wait for the second one, for the next one to come out and, or the next one to be delivered, I should say. Um, so I'm just going to bite the bullet and buy them all at once. This way I can just, just keep plowing through them. Because uh, I got to get ahead of I got to get ahead of Roger. <laughs> DA, yes, sir. If we go into zombie Sasquatches, 
you have to have Gideon bust out a damn flamethrower and say, "Fuck this shit!" <laughs> if I'm roasting this. I'm roasting this motherfucker. <laughs> start, yes. use, start using AT fours on them. No, I'm I'm waiting to AT4, see AT four. Hell, reaction. burn them. I want to see Mike Lance shoot them and burn them. If one don't do it, the other damn sure will. That was like Patton when they first showed him the flamethrower. He's like, "Where do I attach the bayonet?" <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, no, but 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 Mike Blanchard's reaction to uh, a zombie Bigfoot, a zombie Bigfoot, he's like, "What the hell?" <laughs> Jesus, yeah, poor Blanchard. <laughs> I love him so much, and I hate him, but I love him. <laughs> the poor guy he can't catch a break. I like Margolin. <laughs> oh yeah, Margolin. Him, love Gideon. Him. I love Gideon. Gideon is my favorite. Fuck Doc. Whatever. <laughs> oh, Gideon's awesome. <laughs> Doc is – there is no other character in that book that can say he's having angry sex with a snowmobile and pull it off. Thank you. <laughs> but, see, but see, DA knows me, and he knows what I would say. So there you go. Well, I, I, when I was writing that scene, I sent it to, to Carrie – and I was waiting for a response, and it was like 10 minutes. I guess he had to finish laughing before he... <laughs> I did, dude. Guys, yeah. I'm going to say goodnight Smoking to you. a cigar? Okay. Well, Naoma, thank you for coming. Or as the southern oh. lady would say, gentlemen, I'm going to leave you to your cigars and your whiskey. <laughs> oh, Jesus. <laughs> thank you, thank you ma'am. <laughs> you all be good. Well, y'all have a nice evening, ma'am. Oh, you too. I tip my hat to you. <laughs> good night, guys. Have right. a good evening. Thank you, ma'am. All right. Quote so, another fellow from Mississippi. I have not yet begun to defile myself. Right. <laughs> no, that was the first episode. I think I've got Georgia. Of, <laughs> oh, Georgia. That's right. Griffin, so Georgia. You, I think I got plenty of a bottle to do that with. There you go. My man. So you guys do remember the quote from uh, Wyatt Earp? Not not the Tombstone movie, but Wyatt Earp when uh, uh, Wyatt Earp was dunking uh, Doc Holliday's head in the horse trough, and all the people were up on the boardwalk looking down at him. That this is the best. I, this was the best quote ever. It was, uh, "All of you can kiss my rebel dick." Yep. Yes. Yep. Great quote. No, I will say that I've not oh, yet begun I to wish defile I myself. Was in the land of cotton, where old times are not forgotten. Look away, look away, Dixieland. That was our fight song at my high school. Wow, just saying. Uh, I'm feeling mighty. Uh, or, or do you want the Bonnie Blue Flag boys club right now? <laughs> I'm just saying. I was gonna oh. say, uh, you know, uh, if uh, if we weren't as close of friends as we are, Thomas, you're you're basically in a hostile work environment at this point. I think. <laughs> yeah. I, uh, I, I I feel bad for you. <laughs> yeah, I mean, just saying. Yeah, I am. I I am definitely a uh, Yankee. <laughs> I guess we'd have to call it. Who's your, who's the Yankee? I'm I'm, the, I'm I'm well. I'm from West Coast and. <laughs> Yeah, well, that's a damn Yankee. I'm sorry. Well, the fact that you you self-identify as a Yankee and you're the only person of any appreciable color on this uh, this uh, <laughs> podcast, and there's Steve, 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 danger, 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 Steve, bail out, bail danger, out, Steve, danger. He just I'm went there. Where I, where I am going from is like I, you know, in a different environment. This would be perceived really negatively. I'm like. <laughs> Hey, drink a little awkward here, man. Just want you to know, I love you, dude. Dream, oh, right man. Dream right now. You and me are brothers. We're the only one that's got in. <laughs> so. I will say, you know what? Even even though you guys are singing that Dixie song and and your old school fight song and you everything see? else, you know what? Hey. I, I appreciate being invited into the show I and what these are drink and, and make friends with everybody. I'm gonna have to see us, man. These white guys are all by themselves. I don't know what they're doing. <laughs> <laughs> I have learned never to fight with the 
never to fight a white man with a gun. So <laughs> never boded well for my people. Steve, Steve. I mean, Carrie. Yo. Just remember, you just shoot him, then you got to patch him up. Fuck. Damn it. Fact. If you weren't the general, my God. Well, yeah. damn it, boy. Get them panties off your neck. Yeah, you're totally good. You know, we always have the general come on to the later part of the broadcast when everyone's too drunk to give a shit about the highly offensive things that he says. Salud. Yeah, I see Doug just took a drink from his canteen cup. He did not see how far down. <laughs> He's trying to avoid commenting right now, I think. Yeah. Yeah, I've gone down the rabbit hole, and I am so sorry. Yeah, I'm just <laughs> trying to salvage my career. I told Patrick he go down here from Miami today. Like, this is going to be an interesting freaking conversation. Yeah, this, yeah. This, this is what we call edited for TV. VA, this is your podcast. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Okay, I hope I haven't like um, prevented you from doing any more. <laughs> no, no, no! About that three-hour marks when the when the damn train comes off the rails. Usually, yeah. Usually, it's whenever I come in. <laughs> Shit just starts going oh south God. south quick. I gotta come to your freaking restaurant, dude. Yeah, hey, dude, we're usually the hey. first one to cross the ass barrier. Yeah. How far? Are you from I don't know what the fuck you're talking about, Steve? <laughs> How far are you from Church Point, dude? Um. I have no fucking clue. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I know Hammond. I know I drive about 40 minutes, 40 to 45 minutes to New Orleans, and I drive about 30 minutes to Baton Rouge. All right. I got a friend who lives close to Lafayette, and she's in Church Point. I got to send her your freaking coordinates. You mean my address? Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I'm not. I'm like the only one here that doesn't have any kind of badge or military or outdoorsman type knowledge. So, <laughs> according I'm, to Google uh, Maps, it's about two church points, about two hours from Hammond. All right, I'm just a nurse, bro. So whatever. Me too. What, what's that? You, what's that? What's that? You, redneck, you Doug? Is that, to, you is that a little bit further than country miles? Country miles? A little bit. Green Camp T, Louisiana Carrie, is. Carrie and Patrick, you put on a uniform, and same, same as you, Steve, you put on your uniform, and you save people's lives. Well, so I probably. drink to that. Well, Carrie's going to put a uniform on for me later. It's a little French maid outfit. There you go. Well, so Patrick's an RN, too, so he does the same thing. So. That is correct, sir. You know, so... Uh, I drank to uh, you, you know, too, I, sir. I, uh, it... it well, I, when you were on the first time, Carrie, we were talking. Of course, I knew your back background as you know Air Force and, and the Mick and everything. I didn't realize until the night I met you through the podcast that you were a registered nurse. And uh, you know, of course, because I'm a fan of the books, I was already a big fan of Pocket Doc. You know, and then I got to meet you. And then when I found your nurse, I'm like, hell yeah, he's a nurse. Fuck yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, nurses, man, nurses unite. He's like a. He's like my diminutive hero here. Yeah. Hey, brother. You can live vicariously through him as and well. Seriously. What would you say? What was that line? Uh, five foot six is still with sex appeal. Is that what the line was? 100, 180 pounds of twisted seal and sex appeal. There you go. There you go. <laughs> Love it. Oh, man. I was, uh, uh, I'm not a hairy man. Um, so I'm just gonna throw that out there. Uh, but I used to get. I used to get he was wondering, are you are you overtly her suit? No. <laughs> so I used to get a lot of shit back in the day for not being very hairy. And I told him, don't worry, when you hit puberty, it'll come in. Yeah, eventually. Well, I used to tell him, I was like, hey, you know what? Hair don't grow on steel. I'm sorry. Yeah, you may want to cut this, man. Like right now. <laughs> Where did your balls drop, Junior? <laughs> no, I mean, I've been working on this since I was 16, so that's about all I got. <coughs> this is not maintained at all. This is me going wild. 
<laughs> this is my wild man move. I can't do this too much or it'll come off. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Oh, so um, I was going to tell you, Steve. <laughs> I was thinking about, about you earlier when I saw this. It's like, so if, you, if you... Well, don't don't say that yet. Uh, <laughs> if you have sex <laughs> with, you know, two other people, they call that a threesome. If you have mm-hmm. sex with just one other person, that's a twosome. So that's why they call Steve handsome. <laughs> Dude. Wow. That's so <laughs> that's horrible. That's horrible. That's so <laughs> ugly. What do you call hey, dream. I'm offended. I got a cleaner jo- I got a cleaner version of that. Dream. What do you call someone? Was Barry- when you were having your uh, encounters with the dog in the branch, was Barry White just happened to be on the radio? <laughs> I'm sorry, I didn't get that. Oh, Jesus. That goes back to one of our earlier episodes. I said, <laughs> let, let me live it down. Y'all is not Patrick. It's, what do you call somebody that speaks three languages? Is they're trilingual. What do you call somebody that speaks two languages? They're bilingual. What do you call somebody that speaks one language? An American, yes, yeah, yeah. Uh, that was just a cleaner version of the uh, the one that dreams. I love so. that one, that one's awesome. It's true, though, it's so true. It's so true. If you go into other countries, you know, they're speaking multiple languages. Oh, yeah, and we have a we doctor have that works in our urgent care that speaks nine languages. Nine languages, where is he from? And like, I, uh, he is well, he was born in Iran, uh, he, he uh, spent most of his life living in Montreal and he's now an American citizen. And uh, so he's like rattling off like Farsi and French and English. Like, That's like my life. Trump, man. Oh my God. I was like, I really speak English. I, I've got English and drunk English and that's all I know. Yeah, I was just going to say that. I was like, I speak Fluent English. Fluent drunkenese. Yeah. Well, <coughs> You're right there, Dream. Oh, yeah, it just went down a little, <laughs> little funny. Notice the cu- the scotch goes down smooth, but the coke is what he's choking on. <laughs> yes, exactly. Thank you. You understand my problem. It, you know what it is? I'm trying to cut down on my sugar intake, so I'm drinking Coke Zero, and it just doesn't hit right. Dude, you know, I, I thought you were talking about the other Coke. No, I don't do none of that. Dude, <laughs> Doctor Zero is where it's at, man. <laughs> What? <laughs> Dr. Pepper Zero. Dr. Pepper Zero is better? Yeah, oh, way better, man. All right, I'm going to have to give that a try. Because this Coke Zero is not, not cutting it quite as much as I was hoping. Um, but I'm down, like, I'm trying to cut weight. Because I am one fat motherfucker. Um, and I need to do something to save my knees and my ankles and my back. So yeah. I'm trying to, to drink more water and, you know scotch um versus There's water you know, in it i suppose it <laughs> yeah uh yeah, but when i was putting on weight three drinks out and, well, when uh, i was putting away the doctor's like you need to watch alcohol and sugar and and uh i'm like oh, okay so what's diet coke gonna do for me <laughs> because we're not gonna touch the alcohol yeah uh well there there was this one uh what was it was it called the ranch i think there was a show with sam elliott uh, yeah, and they were talking about the doc- like he's going in. The doctor's telling him, you know, you gotta like you gotta cut down on your uh, red meat, and he's like, pass. He's like, he's like, well, you gotta stop drinking whiskey. He's like, he's like, next. He's like, well, what do you do to relieve your stress? He's like, eat steak and drink whiskey. <laughs> yes, yes, yeah. He was like when he saw uh, Ashton Kutcher's character. He is like, he's like almond milk. Where the fuck are the tits on the almond? <laughs> I love it. Yeah. They call it almond milk because nut juice just didn't sound the same. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was gonna say. It's like if you if you want uh if you want some, some if you like almond milk, I got some other nut juice you can yeah. try. Yeah, marketing is nut juice, it just didn't sell as well. Did the almonds ask to be milked, guys? Come on now. Yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, he saw he saw the the Uggs on his feet. He's like, what the fuck are those? Uggs is short for Uglies. Ugg, Ugg fucking Lee. Yeah. <laughs> Somebody uh, in the factory with some almonds going. Ugly. <laughs> Only nurses can do it. <laughs> they, <laughs> they have the detailed hands to be able to extract the almond milk. <laughs> Such precision and care needed. You got to squeeze that hard. Man. Oh man! <laughs> Earlier, <laughs> earlier, I was talking about like man, like you were talking about if you need to patch up a hole in the chest. Da was talking about he's he's gonna call uh call Da, and I was like, yeah, but if you need a catheter, you got to call Steve. <laughs> <laughs> he knows all about that. Oh my God. Yes, man. He, I can just imagine if I ever call Steve because I need a catheter put in, he's going to come in with like one of those giant. Old... <laughs> he's just going to cut off a piece of PVC pipe about yes. a big around. Carrie, come in like, with a right, dream. Don't like worry. Drain. It's like, don't worry, dream. I got you. We call him Big Red. In the ER. Big Red. Big Red. You're getting Big Red, brother. <laughs> That's all it is. If you're if you're you an know, ordinary patient, you're getting yeah. big red. Yeah, when you're big drunk red. and you won't give us a urine specimen. Big, big red, red, no lube. Big red, no lube. You're making me sit different right now. <laughs> Man, I like uh, I like drinking carry a lot more than sober carry. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I'm, I'm enjoying watching the slow decline of drinking carry. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell him to get some more comfortable freaking seats next time. <laughs> oh my god, Damn, my ass is asleep, man. <laughs> well, you gotta you gotta use uh Patrick's seat, the one with the knob in the top. <laughs> That'll probably be better than what I'm saying yeah. right now. <laughs> He's not like a southern Baptist. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> It's it's just a pipe with a ball hitch. Yeah, get more comfortable pews. <laughs> Jesus. Oh man. <laughs> Welcome to the club, hit. Patrick. Welcome to the club. That's why that's why they put the whole hardwood pews in there, Carrie, so you didn't fall asleep on the preacher. That's right. I would team. tell you, I am I am proud and embarrassed of my family at the same time. So we um, we grew up Catholic, and you know that's that's the family religion. Uh, not always the best Catholics, but that's what we were, you know. And um, so my aunt died, and this this last year, and um, we had the funeral, and we're in the wake before the funeral, and. You know, we're all doing the rosary and everything else, and it's just the family in there. And then there's this like little nun sitting in the back of the the thing, making sure everything's running smoothly. And it's just all the family lined up in the front. Uh, everybody gets a turn at the microphone to to say one of the prayers of the rosary. So like the Our Fathers, Hail Marys, for those of you who are in different religions, and <laughs> every single one of them fucked it up. Awesome. Did the nun have a ruler? No, but the nun was sitting in the back like, oh, and it gets better oh. because oh, uh, <laughs> one of my cousins, at the end of it, he gets up to, you know, start talking about his mom. And um, this is just after the rosary. He goes, the first words out of his mouth. Well, we fucked that up. <laughs> oh, <yeah. Are> you <laughs> <laughs> and he said. Uh. But well, mom would have loved it. She wouldn't have had it any other way. <laughs> I grew up in the Assembly yeah. of God Assembly of God Church when I was a kid. And uh when I was a teenager, I went to a Catholic mass with a buddy of mine, and that was like th that was like church calisthenics. Yep. Stan yeah. sit Neil Pray, sing sit Neil Pray. Yep. Catholic <laughs> calisthenics, that's what we call it. And then the, no, the, the, the priest did say something and everybody repeats something back, and I was like completely lost, like Oh, you is can there always... a script I was supposed to pick? Yeah. Yes, yeah. there is. And the best part is, like, you can always tell, like, the the Catholics that used to go forever, then they stopped going, and then they come back. 
Because all of a sudden, every once in a while, like they'll be in the middle of a prayer and everybody stops and looks around. And they're like, wait, they changed it? When did they change it? <laughs> yeah. yeah. So yeah. Like, every once in a while, there's like, oh, fuck. Yeah, yeah. I, grew up, I grew up Baptist, missionary Baptist, and I converted to Greek Orthodoxy. Greek That's Orthodox. Correct. That's when they make the sign of the cross backwards. Yeah. Well, actually, the Catholics make the sign of the cross backwards. <laughs> well, that's what you learned or, out of a mirror. Because the Orthodox were first, and the Great Schism of 954. Council of Mycenae. I'm just Mycenae. saying. Was when the, the Catholic Church split off from the Orthodox Church. But that's when we went from this to this to this to this. Yep. And, and that, was, that was a big thing. But I was like, my godfather, who's my priest, was like, your dad's a Baptist preacher? Like, yeah. He was like, wait, what? But they had a talk to like four in the morning. And my dad, my dad was like, we're more Orthodox and Catholic than we are Baptist. I was like, yeah, pretty much. But whatever. Eh, we all hey, Christian. It's all hey, good. Patrick, when when he falls off that chair, try to catch his head so he doesn't hit it. <laughs> I'm sure there's a dark angel medical kit that you can use to stick him up. <laughs> Cranial trauma. Just, just go ahead and put a pump helmet on, Carrie. I know you got one laying around this <laughs> yeah. somewhere. My morals forbid me to uh, work on someone after I've been drinking. So I'm just going to watch him bleed to death. Oh, Next. man. Carrie, I'm, just go ahead and put a bump helmet on. I know there's one probably laying around there. Yeah. Oh, there yeah. you go. Yeah, it's from his last girlfriend. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. You know, you were, uh, uh, Dreamy, you were sitting there talking about the uh, the Catholic you know, wakes and everything. You know, I was raised Roman Catholic, and, and uh, you know, my, my family's a, an old, Old German family. We always used to think of the wakes as kind of the pregame for the funeral. Yes. You know, the, uh, the, uh, the really serious drinking takes place afterwards. I will <laughs> tell you about that. Oh, my God. So I'm in South Central Los Angeles with my family after the funeral. And I walk in the door. And the first thing, <laughs> one of the cousins walks up that I barely know. <laughs> That is like a cousin of a cousin of a cousin kind of thing. And so he walks up and he hands me a shot glass. He pours me a shot. American. And he goes, he, he holds it up and holds it and I hold mine up and he goes, to the past. I'm like, fuck it, I see where this is going. So I take it and he pours me another one immediately. He's like, to the present. <laughs> I'm like, all right, let's go. Do it. And he pours another one to the future and whatever it may bring. All right, fuck it. Uh, let's go. And I'm about to put my glass down. He pours me another one. And I'm like, what's this one for? He goes, for fuck all. All right, fuck all. <laughs> let's go. So, yeah. You got your helmet on. I love it. Yeah. When my grandfather was, was buried, I was one of the pallbearers. I was about 15. And uh, my grandfather's oldest brother uh, comes up and he's he's got a tray of drinks. And he's passing off drinks to all the pallbearers. You know, bear in mind, I'm 15. And he hands me a drink, and I'm like, "What is this?" And because you know, I was, aside from communion, I was a good little Catholic boy. I didn't, I didn't drink when I was 15. And uh, he has a thing to me, and he goes, "What's a Manhattan?" I'm like, "What's a Manhattan?" He goes, "Don't worry about it. Your pop loved him." <laughs> I'm like, "All right." So I had a Manhattan for my pop because all the pubbers had a Manhattan. And uh, I'm like, like I look at my dad when you know his uncle hands me the drink, and he's like. Go for it. I'm like, okay. So, yeah, I've been drinking Manhattans ever since. Nice. Nice. Well, I will tell you. So, so you say in a Catholic. So much, and... I, I learned so much at that party. Or <laughs> at the funeral <laughs> afterwards. Um, because, what you call it? It had been years since I had been back there, right? So, like, last time I was over there, I was, I don't think I was drinking age yet. Um, so, we went. And, you know, everybody's pounding beers and drinking, like, hard liquor, whatever, right? Well, all the all the beers they threw against one fence. Yeah. All the empty cans. And I was like, oh, dude, okay. that's going to be a shit mess to clean up later. He's like, don't worry about it. I was like, what are you talking about? He's like, don't worry about it. 
I was like, are you kidding me? Like, there's going to be a shit ton of cans. Like, don't worry about it. Just have fun. And later on, I realized, like, as all of the family that is regular, regularly over there hanging out and drinking all the time, they would go into the back garage where there's a bathroom and they'd go to the bathroom over there. On their way back, they would pick up two or three cans and throw it in the recycling can. By the end of the night, it was clean. <laughs> That's pretty what? bad. I was what, like, and was the recycling can runneth over? <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, pretty much. No, there was two. There was two of the big dumpster ones that you push out to the curb for uh-huh. recycling. You know, most people would That's request awesome. a second recycling can or a second can for their regular garbage. They requested a second can for their recycling. <laughs> So, so awesome. you're saying the Catholics they get drunk? Yes. Uh, at all the funerals I've been to for Southern Baptists, it's always four or five trays of fried chicken. Carrie's <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> yes, yes. It, it, I, no, seriously, Carrie, you can elaborate on this one just as well as I can. If you go to a Southern Baptist funeral, there's going to be at least four or five trays of damn fried chicken. Won't look, and you and you try and get rid of the damn shit because otherwise you think you're growing feathers by the end of the funeral. Don't forget yeah. about the cornbread. Am I yeah. not wrong, Kerry? No, we call it the gospel bird. <laughs> the gospel <laughs> bird. <laughs> it's like God. people think the Baptist preachers lived off of fried chicken. That's and what the Last Supper was. I grew up on fried chicken. People are like, how do you like fried chicken? I said, dude, I love fried chicken because but the thing is I, I ate so much of it as a youth as a youth as a youth, what? As a youth. <laughs> all right my cousin Vinny keep it up <laughs> yeah it, it's one of those things where you love it or you don't but I love it but we call it the gospel bird because fried chicken is the gospel bird I I have not heard of that. So I will my wife is Baptist. She used to call it yard bird. Yard, yeah. I've heard yard bird. My wife's family is all Baptist, and you can't go to a family room without having six different kinds of tater salad. Yeah. Oh, dude. That and a tater salad. <laughs> Cold tater salad and some banana pudding. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and a pudding. And now you're talking. Now, now, now it's a southern now, now you, Baptist. Now you guys will be. I am shaking my head at this because I know I'm in the wrong group. Gotta have the gotta have the nanner pudding with the vanilla now, wafers. Da, no, no, no. You gotta I, have. I will never pudding. eat potato now, salad. Now, da, da, Carrie, you guys are going no drool. Pigmentation. You might want to get a get a drool cup because my mama, she fixes she fixes it the old school way with the uh, double boiler for her um, cream. If I'm saying if I'm saying the right part, <laughs> yes, yes, you know, the your screen. yes, Lord. So that is she fixes fire. she fixes the old, old school way with the double boiler. Yeah, I yeah. have a question. N- needs to say needs to say at every uh, Christmas party they go to that they've been to at least once. The the request is always bring back. Br- all right, you've been assigned to Nana Pudding <laughs> for for, for time. I'm immortal. My mama fixed it so good. That's the way it should be. I I have a question for all of you. I may be ignorant. I may not be white, but I am drunk. So forgive me. Have any of you, by a show with a show of hands, ever used or heard used, and not in a in a joking manner, the phrase "Praise the Lord" and pass the ammunition. No, it's just joking. That's just a joke. I will, That's a joke one. thing. Okay. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> John, no, no, Dalton raised his hand. Don't rise. Yeah. Look, 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 you think. You don't rise. We need to use that term. Yeah. Okay. I, that's what I said. I, I don't know. I could be wrong. But yeah. I, I guess that's, this is the that audience my, uh, that I can ask. Without Carrie, like, yes, yes. <laughs> Carrie, here's one for you. Brown beans with a ham hock in them. With fried taters with onions and cornbread. Oh, brother. Come like on. Black eyed peas, dude. Come on, man. 
Why are you teasing that, me? <laughs> that, that's Ozark Mountain steroids right there. Hey, well, I grew up that, on that. That's some that feather soul. There. Hey. You throw some fucking collard greens on that. We're, we're money right there, son. Break your cornbread up in them beans. Mm. Oh, my uh, wife. Now you want to talk about a good old ham? My, my uncle, when he's full with hogs, he had the old salt bin and roll that old ham hawk in a salt bin. Right. You, there. Get it, you, you get that thing out of Christmas time, you get the damn salt and mm, pucker, pucker hey. factor, man. As my daddy so, used to say, if I don't light your fire, your wood's wet. Come on. There you go. No, uh, no, you, like, no, you, you stayed away from that ham if you were mm-hmm. diabetic or had high blood pressure. Because that damn thing was going to put you in a damn coma, that ham hawk would. Oh, no, let's, wait, let's, 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 let's put it in southern terms here. You got the high blood or you got the low blood. That's, well, you that, had, that's diabetic. You had high time. blood after you finished with that ham because he was on that's the right. softer side. That's what right. Say about the wood being wet. Well, that was good old. Oh, but if it don't light your fire, your wood wet. Yeah, you got the high blood, and the low blood. <laughs> wet wood does not burn. Yeah, wet wood, wet wood does not burn. So okay, so I'm trying to understand what what. You, okay, I understand. I'm not, I'm not making fun of you. But you just ruined the whole thing. Okay. <laughs> so I, I'm that's that's not a term. As we say down south, dream. Bless your heart. <laughs> oh, stop it. I know that one. Hey, hey Carrie, up here uh, up here in Missouri, if you the farther north in Missouri you get, they don't know what the hell sweet tea is. Oh, my God. What the uh, but down, right? down here in the southern part of Missouri, you can get sweet tea anywhere you go. But if you hey. get up like Kansas City, St. Louis, you order sweet tea, they just look at you like you grew a third arm out your neck. Hey. But you got to be careful in restaurants in Missouri. If you, or if you order sweet tea, they may or may not know what it was. Hey. Well, the wife and I, we went on vacation to Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, and I'm used to asking in a restaurant. Well, we stopped in a Cracker Barrel on the right side of the highway in Georgia, and I made the mistake of asking if they had sweet tea. And the wait, the waitress stops, and she looks at me, and she goes, well, bless your heart. <laughs> she puts her hand on, on, my, uh, on my arm, and she looks at me and goes, honey, it don't come no other way. Hey, That's dream. right. Dream. Yeah. See, sweet tea isn't just putting some damn sugar in your tea. No. Okay. That's right. Hey, okay. Oh, wow. Dude, that's a fact because out here in Colorado Springs, you ask for tea, you go get your tea sweet. You go to Boulder, you get your tea with fucking chia seeds or whatever the fuck that is. Yeah, that ain't, that ain't right. It, that ain't now, right. Now, there's a difference between sweet tea and damn molasses. Yeah. Dude, I've got a that's as wrong as fucking two boys fucking in church on Sunday on, on the front pew. You come on? <laughs> you know, that's disgusting. That's, that's nasty. No, 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 no. Let me finish my statement, Kerry. There's a difference between sweet tea and sweet tea molasses. I have a Bojangles up the road from me. I have to watch their shit. I have gotten sweet tea to where it is, oh, my God, I, I a 30-ounce cup. You cut it twice. You take about this much out of it. Yeah. And, cut, and you can cut it yeah. twice before yeah. you get to sweet tea. Yeah. That's what I mean you, by molasses. Yeah. You That's need just too damn sweet. Dude, you need 15 units of insulin before you can even drink your sweet tea. <laughs> That's so exactly. That, that I I said, the sweet tea molasses. It's like a Wilbur Brimley, plus his heart, said diabetes. That's my uh, my son's inherited my smart ass attitude. My youngest son asked for a sweet tea one time at a restaurant, and they said, uh, "They said is sweet no okay?" He says, "Is Monopoly money okay?" <laughs> <laughs> my daughters did that. We went to a restaurant, and they're like, "Would you have Coke?" Well, we have Pepsi, and my daughter's like, my oldest daughter Rebecca is like, "Is Monopoly money okay?" Oh, God. Uh, do you have Dr. Pepper? All right. We'll drink Dr. Pepper. You know, Harim, I got a, as, a, as a chef, I got, I got a serious question for you. You made a comment about you don't trust potato salad, basically made by white people. What's the difference in how you make potato salad? Because I love potato salad. I want to uh, seriously know. Teasoning. <laughs> well, no. Teasoning. Okay. No. Dream, where are you from? I'm from California. 
All right. And also, I don't Louisiana. want no damn avocado in my taco <laughs> no, salad. No, Steve, no, no, no. Steve, don't listen to Dream. Don't listen to Dream. Okay. <laughs> Mayonnaise versus mustard. Sweet dill relish versus dill pickle relish. There's differences, yes. Dream, am I correct? Sir? You're correct. You're very correct. I like me some mustard potato salad. <laughs> <laughs> I like me some <laughs> I don't want to like it. Now, I have like, also accidentally tasted some some plain ass, no taste, disgusting potato salad from a Karen multiple dude, times. That's like that having sex with a cousin. <laughs> I wouldn't know. I mean, it, it, feels, it feels kind of the same, but it's wrong. You know what I mean? It, it, I'm just saying. <laughs> Oh. It feels kind of the same, but it's Man, wrong. That is hotter than two coons fucking on a tin roof in July. Hotter than a fresh butt nanny goat in a pepper patch. Come on. <laughs> Just saying. Hotter than, <laughs> hotter than a diseased ball sack in aluminum underwear. <laughs> that is correct. That's, that was, that's a medical thing, not a southern thing. Yeah. <laughs> 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 We're joking in the kitchen. I'm so Here glad you all joined us for the final episode of TX. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You just got it. You know what? You just got it. You just got to make a comment. Out, DA. You just got to make a comment on mm. your website. Tune off after three hours. You're good. If you make it through three hours, just stop. You're good. <laughs> The rest wow. is just utter nonsense. You, you're and going to Southern Comedy Tour. We're we're looking to try and get sponsored by Jeff Foxworthy. Gear done. Oh, if, God. If, if either Dream or Dalton appears, it will disintegrate rapidly. <laughs> it won't me. It was that one. It was that well shit. That way. <laughs> it was that <laughs> way. Like, I didn't do nothing. I don't know what you're talking about. Drunk pocket doc didn't okay. help matters either. <laughs> no. I was enjoying watching now, Doc. No, I think the problem is you matters. got two Southern boys in here at the same time. It's usually bad with Ooh. me. You add throw carry into it, and we done mi mixed g gasoline and napalm. We got Which a wrong bomb file three. now. Three. Which means two Southern. You saying because saying I'm half Japanese, I ain't Southern? <laughs> 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 I love Patrick. We oh, gotta Lord. have him back every time. I don't think uh, General was here when I explained that. So. No, uh, now, Dalton, where are you from? I'm from uh, Virginia. All right, that ain't even Southern, dude. That's too far up. <laughs> well, I ain't, but I ain't, but about two hours from the Carolina line. There you go. I right. ain't from. It's okay. It's His accent Virginia. brings him further south about another ten miles. He's up by the hey, Manson. Yeah. He's yeah. up by the Manson Nixon line. Yeah, uh, you ain't from West by God, Virginia. You're from no, Virginia, no, no. Virginia. I, ain't, I ain't Northern Virginia. That's Northern Virginia, sir. I'm go. Southern Virginia. I'm Central this Southern. He's, he's from Montgomery. Man, I'm company. just gonna okay. I'm just gonna start calling General Dalton Foghorn Leghorn. That's about it. <laughs> I, I say, I say, I say, get your ass back to the kitchen, boy, and make me a damn sandwich. Hey, I am not medication. your wife. <laughs> <laughs> no, but you're the damn cook. So get your ass back to the kitchen. I'm hungry. <laughs> Lord. Mm. <sighs> How yeah, I so, dream if you did make him something, make it so spicy he couldn't eat it. Oh no, when we first started, I told you we had capsaicin in the restaurant. I had it was in a little prescription pill bottle. And when people were asking, This isn't spicy enough, I need a more spicy. I'm like, All right, yeah. I got you. Don't worry, bring it back. Drop, 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 drop. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> they'd, be, they'd be in the bathroom sweating and crying. It was oh, great. Gosh. You had pure capsaicin in the bottle? Yes. Oh. It was, we, had to wear, we had to wear a glove. Yep. And it came in a little squeeze bottle, like a little eyedropper thing with a little, well, little that's suit. Yeah. So you, you weren't putting enough Tony Sashrays in it? No, fuck Tony. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> Tony Sashrays does not go and get any food. 
But <laughs> well, I'm putting so, well, on my eggs. Tony Satchery's is good. Don't get me wrong. It's you good. Don't get sued. What about well, slapping well, the mom? Well, well, right, Drew, so, this is where right, Rick has his do, privileges. I have, I have is, my security detail drag your ass back out of the kitchen and have you take the first bite. So if you're going to spike it, you better make sure you can handle your own heat. No, dude. Like, honestly, the first time it happened, there's one customer in particular I'll tell you about. First time it happened, we had the bottle there because some people wanted it extra spicy. And we told them it's extra spicy. If you really want it extra spicy, we can make it extra spicy. And we'd put one, one or two drops depending on how spicy they wanted it. And it was just a thing. We did it for a while. It was a thing. And we had one a-hole customer that would continually complain, saying it wasn't spicy enough. I'm like, okay, I put two drops in there. Like, that's a lot. And he's like, no, it's not spicy enough. Make it spicier. Like, all right, we want to play this game? We're going to play. So the first time I put four drops, sent it out. This is not spicy enough. All right, bitch, send it back. All right, I'll make you another one. Don't worry. And that that second time it went out, let's just say I lost count after ten. Damn, son. Oh. And then he what? complained. Was too spicy. No, he didn't say a word after that. But he came out of the bathroom sweating pretty hard. Yeah, because that's just how he dehydrated after that. Yeah. He was oh. he was a whole different shade of white after that. Bless his heart. We were, in, uh, yeah. in, uh, we were down in Pensacola uh, a few years ago, and I always, you know, growing up in, in Missouri and hardly ever leaving Missouri, I, I really want to try a boy. And I was like, oh, you know, let's let's go go get this. We went to this place, this uh, Harry's Fish Market down there, and it was a like a shrimp po' boy. I don't know what they used to season it, but I mean, it, it could take the paint off a fence. <laughs> and uh, I, I took a bite out of it. I mean, it was like it was like an out of body experience. And the waiter yeah. comes over. Of course, they always get you right after that first bite. And I was like, <sighs> you know. <laughs> and I, I said, "What do you put on this?" I said, "God damn, it's spicy." And the uh, the waitress goes, oh, "Sweetie," and she just laughs and walks away. That that was yeah. the and. Uh, a little while later, she comes back with a, a, a cup of milk, and she goes, you might need this, son. <laughs> off again. I ate the whole sandwich because it was absolutely delicious. Yeah. But the heat on that was... Yeah. Dude, I could grow body hair for a month. Well, see, people... It was equate, absolutely ridiculous. Did it people, burn? Yeah, people equate heat for taste, mm -hmm. and that ain't the way it works, man. Nope. Burn coming out. Yeah. You look for... Oh, God, it did. On the jam of your butthole because you're sitting there going, Give me some ice cream. You know, oh, no, no, it's for here because I know it's coming from here to here. And I will want it coming on number two because I'm jamming a fuck, I'm jamming an ice cream cone up my butthole because I know it's gonna, it's gonna be like scorched earth on the way out. I'm just saying. That puts a, a whole new uh, yeah. definition to the term beef. Yeah, sorry, DA. I'm sorry, so, man. Dream, you need to start selling ice cream in your restaurant. <laughs> no, no, no. We, we stopped yeah. doing the capsaicin. Uh, that was just not a, a feasible expense uh, for the for the requirement. Well, and um, I was I was really shocked when I started eating Vietnamese food because, you know, again, I'm Springfield, Missouri. But, you know, my, my daughter's boyfriend's Vietnamese. And so the first time I tried actual pho, he made it for me. Ooh. And it's hot, but it's a weird, different kind of hot. Like, I'm used to hearing no, it, shouldn't with be, mix of it shouldn't be hot, spicy. It, well, regular this, pho is it, not spicy. And he probably made you, some, uh, he probably made you a bun bo uh, which is a spicy beef soup. Um, well, this, that, no, this was is hot, like, but it has some bite to it. Yeah. Was it a uh, red in color? Uh, Kind of yeah, a little bit. Yeah, he made you we something gotta, different. He didn't make you fuck. We got a go fuck king. Yeah, no, I was, ooh, I'll tell you about that too. I'm uh, serious. This is called fucking hot. <laughs> <laughs> I, I shit you not, brothers. It's called fucking. No, I know. Yeah. I wanted. I wanted to name the restaurant the Fuck Palace because I wanted to be fucking Thomas. 
I wanted to have one of those big, big bowl challenges and call it the fucking bowl. And if you beat the challenge, we were going to put your, uh, we were going to give you a t-shirt and put your name on the fucking wall. That's amazing. We've got a restaurant here in Springfield called Fuck Him. And uh, K-I-M. And I swear to God, look it up. Uh, and, And so I was asking, on my my uh my oh, so boyfriend, right. and it was all your girlfriend really thinks you to break up. <laughs> and we've lost yes. thirty five hundred followers right now. <laughs> yeah, oh, DA, boy. you got to start <laughs> drafting apology letters to all of our wives <laughs> for how fucked up we're getting tonight. <laughs> Fucking, it burns. Oh my gosh, it burns so bad. Oh lord. <sighs> Well, hey, it's been a good while since we've got a comment, so we may have lost a lot of folks. Yeah. But some good fun. Steve, some you might have to go across town and do that. It's where it's at. Some, uh, respiratory on DA. He's getting very red in the face. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness gracious. Uh, he's, oh, match- he's matching his band he- on his hat. <laughs> <laughs> oh my oh my say. He's getting about the same shade as his hat. <laughs> Carrie, I got the vapors. I got the vapors, <laughs> baby. Holy oh crap, guys. Yeah, I didn't say anything, but what, Carrie, I what is, had about three minutes yeah, ago. I had the vapors. Uh, what's what's particularly Carrie? concerning for me is I'm actually sober and this is going down like it's going. That's that's the problem. <laughs> I switched it's to coffee and I still you. can't keep a straight face. <laughs> now, Steve, oh you Lord. weren't here for the first episode of the Nightmare Hunter. If you ever had a chance, watch <laughs> that. When Dream drank an entire bottle. Yes. Oh my God. Oh, Lord. What are because you well, yeah. I've I put the this hurt on this. Through. It was about half full when I started, but you know. yeah, Damn. Mine, Damn. mine was about half full when I started. I don't know if oh. you can even see it. Yeah, he's <laughs> Well, yeah. no. Uh, the first episode, Patrick. What? <laughs> <laughs> the sun is crying. No, I was crying on the first episode because I put away an entire bottle of a hundred dollars scotch. <laughs> and, <laughs> and I was not happy with that. Lord have mercy. You know, you know, do you, you need to add a little, uh, like a, a, a counter, like a, almost like an odometer type counter on the. Uh, the page that cranks up the dollar value as the alcohol gets consumed. You know, <laughs> like a poor dream with this hundred dollar bottle of scotch. Like, yeah, we, we may have to switch this over to, to a Patreon stream. No, no, we, we know the people that are here really want to be here. <laughs> this is true. And then we can uh, we can get uh, Dalmore to sponsor us. So there we go. Nice. I've Dalmore been Bush Mills. I've been there in Dalmore. Dude, well, I, you know, I, that's my next purchase is uh, a Dalmore, another Dalmore 15. Mm-hmm. Um, and yes. then uh, when I can, I'm going to try to get the 25 because that, awesome. that 15 was so beautiful the last time I had it. Yeah. The what? The Dalmore 15? 15 years. Yeah. So that's what we call grown man liquor. Um, <laughs> man liquor. <laughs> man liquor. <laughs> what? Oh my god! So, Carrie, a, a, a funny. I'll talk about whatever you want. I'm just here, man. <laughs> hey, uh, you know, Carrie, since you're a businessman, you might appreciate this marketing. So, you know how when you when you buy something on Amazon, they're always like, "Those who bought this also bought this," and they you know, they suggest other things you might like. Right after I bought the entire Ragnarok Rising saga on Kindle, uh, it suggested that I might like. This item and it, it pulls up a black steel flask, a whiskey flask. Apparently, with with all the mentions of uh, of Bushmills in the Red Rock Rising books, I <laughs> the flask. So I bought it. Yes. Yeah, I think Doug sold a shit ton of Irish whiskey on the on the. I Rag- have Rising. yet to try Irish whiskey. I I don't know if I can. I, there's so much scotch that I want to try. Look it up. Seriously, Dude, it's a great Black Bush. Model. Black Bush is where it's at, son. Black Bush. Yeah, Black Bush. Bush Mills Black. 
that's where it's at, man. Is it more mm-hmm. peaty or smoky, or how does that how is that translate? No, it's, it's, not, it's not smoky at all, man. It's only, smooth as hell. Yeah, okay. only, Too only about, like as far as scotch goes, only about twenty percent of scotch is is peated, which means they smoke the barley over the over the 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 peat. The rest of it is is heat or it's just regular coal. It's it's good. All right. Same thing was very what's it's very so smooth. how much does a bottle of black bush go for? Thirty-five dollars. Nothing, man. Yeah. What's the it's next not- level up? Because <laughs> I don't bush? trust anything that's twenty to thirty bucks. Uh Tier Connell. T Y R C O N N E L L. Tier Connell. Tier Connell. All right. Yeah. I'm gonna. Somebody's gonna have to message me that when they're sober, because I'm not gonna remember. <laughs> that. Um, but my my Excuse birthday when you're sober. Up, uh, next month, so I might be buying, might be splurging a little bit more on myself. Well, actually, no, it's coming up in a couple weeks. Fuck. Man. Yeah, Tier Connell, the Tier Connell is a good Irish whiskey, really good. And how much does that one go for? About sixty bucks a bottle. All right, that's fair. That's average. That's yeah, good. That's not bad. Not Dream. bad at all. Dream, you remind me of a Jerry Clower joke. Oh my god, Jerry Clower. Holy shit. <laughs> you ever heard you remember the horse blanket? No. Carrie? No, I don't, man. You, ain't, you don't remember the horse blanket at the uh you ain't never heard you ain't never heard the horse blanket one? Oh, let's do it. Come on. Try not right. to do anything that's going to get me blackballed. I no. Think this it. guy broke down next to this country store. Say he had a world-class racing horse. They said he needed a blanket to put on the horse while it was, cause it was raining. So he so he comes up, puts the horse blanket on, said so it'd be $10. He said, you could, sir, this is a world-class racing horse. I can't put no damn ten dollar blanket on this horse. Goes back again, gets a different color. Said it'd be twenty five dollars, sir. And then he goes back and said, "This is a world class racing horse." He goes back and gets a third color, puts it on the counter. Says it'll be fifty dollars. He said sold. And he goes to ring it up. And now, if I remember the punchline right, a fool and his money are soon parted. <laughs> the same damn horse blanket, just different color. You, you never heard of that one? No. Now I was I was, I was paraphrasing a whole lot. The joke's a whole lot better from Mister Clower. I wish my daddy was still here because he was a Jerry Clower aficionado, for sure. Well, like hey, I said, I was, you ever... I was paraphrasing a whole lot on that. Have you ever had the uh, Bushmills 21? Mm-mm. Did, did you hear the end I, of it to a dream, or do I have to do it again for you? That's, that's, that's true for the mm. most part. But I have also learned that you should never drink whiskey that's younger than your kids. I've heard that before. Yeah. So, I mean, well, don't make a I, damn, I well, don't make a damn to me because I ain't got no damn kids. Oh, well, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Like, as far as I'm not trying to be like prudish or or egotistical or you know like like whatever bougie or whatever. But I, you know, like for as far as like what I'm consuming, I don't. I I I want to make sure that what I'm buying is quality. Oh yeah, mm-hmm. and well, the, the, for the price point, I the Bushmills is really good. Yeah. yeah. Well, and and I, I would definitely give it a shot. Okay. Uh, you can tell he's in the south. He's got ceiling fans on the porch. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I like half of it is half of it is I'm outside too. Half of it is for the the heat, the other half is for the bugs. <laughs> yeah. Slap, slap the skeeters yeah. out the air. Yep. Yes. Dream, dream, what's the humidity like uh, over there right now? Um, like um, walking through the ocean. I hear you. That's why I had to move, man. I couldn't take it anymore. (laughs) 
cold. God damn. <laughs> uh, me. Steve, that's just wrong. <laughs> <clears throat> no, I'm not a fan of the I, humidity. Um, I definitely miss California every single day. Um, well, you've got it's beautiful either country hot. down there, though, man. Huh? You've got beautiful country down there, though, man. It's it's right there on the Gulf Coast, especially. It is beautiful, but the humidity is a little bit of a trip. Yeah, the ants will carry you away if you sit down outside for too long. No, that's California. The ants will get you. Here is the skeeters. Oh well, when I was down in New Orleans, there, there was fire ants all over the damn place. And, we uh, uh, we refer to them as mosquito dactyls. Yeah, mosquito dactyls. Pretty much. Yeah, <laughs> pretty much. You know, um, there is a, a fine line between a mosquito and Louisiana mosquito dactyls, uh, but they are they are terrifying sometimes. So, I mean, they like I I had never seen a truck that goes by and sprays for mosquitoes until I moved here. I was like, what the don't hell is that? Don't blame the smoke. Yeah. I was like, that's stupid. What, what are they doing? They're just spraying stuff everywhere in the sky. Like, like they're driving down the street spraying everything. And I was like, what the hell is that? Because like, oh, if they don't spraying. do that, you find people laying on the sidewalk that look like they've been like a raisin, like they've been drained dry. Shit. It looked they've like they got small thighs. What do you think the old people look like? Applehead dolls. The mosquitoes have got them too much. Man. Well, if a mosquito ever got me, he'd fall over dead from alcohol poisoning. <laughs> Your blood type is 80 proof. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it'd be Yo, crashing I, into sides of buildings. Well, I, I was getting a, a blood sample at the uh, endocrinologist's office a while back. And, of course, you know, when they draw a tube, you know, they always mix it to get the anticoagulant mixed into it. I said, don't do that. It's got a head on it. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Steve, you got to drink more. You're still using big words. <laughs> Gary, you're right I, there, Bubba. You look like you're swaying a little. I've had a lot of practice there, Audrey. <laughs> Good, brother. I just got back to the bathroom. Uh-huh. The bathroom? Yep. Yep. Oh, is that the, Either... the tree on the left or the right? Yeah. <laughs> okay. You got a bathroom? Oh. I thought it just had a Johnny house outside. Well, that, yeah, too. that too. That too. Johnny house? Oh, okay. It's an outhouse. Called John. I got it. Outhouse, right. yeah. You guys and your... I'm He'll trying to approach that. Now, now, don't, I, I, don't I just, just, uh, now, 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 here's, now, here's a damn good prank for somebody. If you've got a job site and you've got an outhouse, they make a remote control snake now. Little RC snakes. Uh, no. Nope. 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 So, all right. So, I'll tell you about an outhouse. We went camping. Uh, when I, I didn't was say you. I, I just said here's an idea for you, son. No, we went to uh, we went camping when I was in the youth group. It's whether or not you get that and, snake back uh, in one piece is another story. Well, it was Fourth of July weekend, <laughs> and uh, my uh, our our counselor found out that we had brought a whole bunch of fireworks, illegal ones like the M sixties, the M eighties, or whatever it is, M eighties and M one sixty. Your fingers. Yes. Um. So he got pissed off and sent us to to go dump them. Well, he told us to throw it in the in the porta potty out there, and dump them all in there, nope. and we're gonna go. We're gonna get out of here. We're leaving. And middle of the ride home, he starts freaking out like, "Oh my god!" And then he starts laughing, and I was like, "What the hell? Are you what's what's so funny?" He was like, "I'm just imagining the poor guy that goes in and he's smoking a cigarette, and tosses it in." <laughs> Oh no! Or, or the guy on the burn, bar the guy in burn barrel duty oh. in the army. Oh my god! Well, you, you know, dream the uh, the flushable toilet. In all seriousness, was invented by an Englishman. His name is Sir John Crabber. Ah, uh, <laughs> I am dead serious. I am absolutely sense. serious. I uh, get it. That's Sir why they John call Crapper. it John, or or Crapper for that matter. Yeah. Or Crapper. Hmm. There you go. Yeah. Gonna make it sound sophisticated. It's the crappy A. Can you, can you imagine the fact that he got knighted for that? 
Sir John, Sir John Crapper. Crapper. Sir Crapper. He was knighted for inventing a flushable toilet. I wonder if it's like a Purple Heart where they like record forever the annals of history why you got the award. <laughs> annals you know, like, of history. <laughs> He's like, so, what's this guy so, well, so that, Carrie, that you did not like, my, shit. Did not like my pr- practical joke? Well, oh, practical joke. I actually just left work and we're closed tomorrow. So one of my cooks is very fond of his knife. Um, that it's his own personal knife and he paid for it and he bought it and he's happy about it. So I took it, wrapped it in a Ziploc bag and stuck it in a big container full of water. In the freezer? In the freezer. (laughs) (laughs) So he's going to walk in Monday morning. (laughs) What the fuck? (laughs) It's going to take him a minute to get it out. On board. Well, boys, we're on the four-hour mark. <laughs> Probably ought to be looking to wrap this up. Uh, I'm getting the hairy eyeballs from the from the wife giving me the text, like, when are we going to eat? So I uh, probably ought to get off here while I... Yet? No, not yet. Just throw probably ought to get off here while I still have fine. some semblance of a career left. Yeah. <laughs> Just throw her a chocolate bar. You'll be fine. That's probably more the point here, VA. <laughs> yeah. And then I'm we'll... sorry about your career, but I love you, man. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> Actually, we should save his career at this point because <laughs> we have this whole last hour just needs to be deleted. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> DA, Steve, the last, hour, last two hours. What the hell are you talking about? Two hours. No, well, I'm, I've only been on since around a little bit before midnight. So. Patrick, what was that? So I, I have family in Kansas City, Missouri, so uh, I can make a drive east if uh, you know you want to set something up. We'll, uh, I'd love to do one of those things you were talking about. Um, oh. stars, um, getting the crap scared out of me going to uh, go down to the old, old school campgrounds. Yeah. There's uh, a lot of places in the Ozarks like that. I mean, him, I'll, I'll come out to him and we'll go out there together. Hell was, yeah. I'm down. I was just in Kansas city a couple of weeks ago, as a matter of fact. So. Awesome. And it never hurts to have an extra EMT who knows how to use a, use a firearm. Uh, well, paramedic, yeah, all the, no. All paramedics. Or paramedic. I'm not sorry. Not all EMTs are paramedics. So, you know, yeah. yeah. Paramedic is the higher level of uh, things there. I apologize. I did well, let me know when you guys are going to plan on being in the area, and we'll make something happen. I'm actually not a yeah, paramedic. Definitely. Way up in Oregon. So. Yeah. We yeah. might actually no. convince Steve to go back again. Oh, well, you need to bring it, a jar of his pee. It, yeah. If there's enough big guys with guns, even little guys with bigger guns, that'll work great. So. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I love you, Doc. <laughs> I'm just saying. Uh, I no, seriously, I, I am interested though. I, I think it'd be interesting, and, and if nothing else, just to hang with you guys. I mean, I live literally across town from Doug, so you know it's it's, it's not a big deal. And and uh, I, I uh, my weekends are open some weekdays depending on the schedule, and it'd be a lot of fun. Yeah, that'd be good stuff for sure. Yeah, I definitely want to do it. We'll film. We'll film on it and show. We'll film the the uh, excursions yeah. and put them on the air. That would be that would be fun. <laughs> Hell yeah, DA. Let me. Well, you know, you sure that's a good idea, DA? What was that, Patrick? Sorry, uh, Dalton. Just a second. DA, are you against us uh, shooting dog man? That's what I. Oh, no, no, okay. no. I'm not against it. Okay. Wow. Because I'm 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 of the uh, of the opinion that if it's trying to eat me, it's fair game. Okay. So. Yeah, <laughs> no. you send me the videos before nightfall. Um, yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, DA, we got 4G on the Buick, so, uh, you know, we can live stream it as well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, there you go. yeah, if you guys are going to make the trip, let me, let me know when you plan on being here. We'll make a trip of it. All right. Yeah, we can do that. Yeah. And yeah. if you're going to come through the Kansas City area. If you're gonna you know, coming up past Kansas City, just outside Kansas City is a little town called Cameron, Missouri, okay. and in Cameron, Missouri is a town is a restaurant called Tub Creek Barbecue, the best barbecue I've ever had in my life. I've been right. going to I've been going to uh, Kansas City Joe's a lot, or just Joe's, whatever they call it now. So. I've had barbecue all over Missouri, and Tub Creek blows them all away. All right, all right, we'll do that. Sounds like a good plan. So yeah. I have a I have a question real quick before we sign out. 
Um, mm-hmm. DA, when's what's the latest news on your Nightmare Hunter, and uh, what what can we expect coming forward going forward? Well, it's funny you would mention that we just got the logo done. Yeah. Oh, that's amazing. That's nice. That's actually Roger's profile. We stole a picture off his uh, his Facebook page. <laughs> oh, that's amazing. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that's going to be on the cover. Uh, that I should have done in the next couple of days, and it'll be off to edits. Uh, then I'm starting book one. Well, hell, I'll just put the list up. Uh, we'll be starting book one of Man's Marauders, then Lakeview Man, Beast of Blunk Road, then the next Apex Predator, then the Codename Wild Hunt, and then they'll start to cycle. Nice. And you may see Dark Angel Medical used exclusively in there. Heck, Did yeah. Absolutely. Up. I'm excited. I heard about, uh, I don't know if I can share it here, um, but about a new kit coming out with the logo. Oh, dude. Yeah. DNA, DA and I have to get uh, on to John about that next week. So mm-hmm. I'm just waiting on DA to send me the, uh, the, the, the patches, the artwork. Yeah. And I'll get that to my guy. We're gonna have a, an exclusive kit. It's gonna be, it's gonna be freaking rad. I'm That's super a, excited I want to see that it, man. Kit. I yeah. want that kit, and I want, yeah. I want it right now. <laughs> <laughs> I'll yeah, get you that too. artwork the next day or two. In the next day or two, Gary. Yeah, whenever, brother. Because hey, I showed it to John to uh, Patrick tonight. Hey, Gary, when are you gonna reload your shirts? Who? I Say said, when are you going to reload your shirts on your website? We are in the process of getting some new shirts made up. So i got to wait for the artwork to come back. And once that happens, we're going to get them made up. Awesome. Well, they're definitely popular. I was wearing that Blood, Lungs, and the Body shirt. And uh, I got stopped at a store. And uh, they're like, uh, yeah, where'd you get that? I was like, oh, Dark Angel Medical. you got to look them up. And, nice. Oh, that's sweet. That one right there. Is coming out in the next couple of months or next couple of weeks. Sorry. Ooh, that looks awesome. Yeah. Dark Angel's got some great hats. Can you throw his link up there too? Oh, yeah. Me, yeah. Uh, I'll put that up in the. Uh, Just in case make a we banner for it real quick. Still watching. <laughs> <laughs> the, the three people we have not offended. <laughs> well, it's been fun. So, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> there's the there's the link. Yay, darkangelmedical.com. Thanks, DA. Hey, not a problem. Thank you guys for being on. And uh thanks for cracking me up. It's fun, man. God. You, I think I when have, he can I have not, good time. In, in all seriousness, as somebody who's completely sober, you know, this has been a shit week thanks to COVID. You guys have cheered me up. You've given me what I need to get through the next week. You know, you know. Ditto. If, if nothing Hello. else, if nothing else, Steve, oh, all you gotta do is just bring it back up on YouTube and watch it again. <laughs> hey, go watch it again, yeah. Assuming we don't get taken down for content. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, just fast forward to the three hour mark. Yeah. 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 <laughs> well, gentlemen, thank you guys for being here. I want to thank all of our guests for being here tonight. And uh, you know, make sure you check the uh, the chat logs. You can p- p- pick on the uh, links uh, for Jamie Hernandez's books and check those out as well. And I appreciate y'all being here and pre- appreciate everything y'all do. And uh, look for uh, the the new book, the the uh, Nightmare Hunter uh, should be out within the next few weeks. I'll uh, watch my my website daroberts.net and my Facebook page uh, for release details, and those will be coming soon. And uh, again, thank you guys for being here. And uh, appreciate every one of you guys, and you guys be safe. Thank you for joining us tonight on DAX Machina. Follow DA on social media and check out all his work at www.daroberts.net. Good night, and don't forget to lock your doors.